Welcome to Dave, the world according to David. Won't you come on in? They're just filtering in like crazy. Crazy. Ah, oh, I see a lot of happy people, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of familiar names. That's awesome. So while we're waiting for people to fill in, uh, I guess a welcome to Killer Influence, Secrets of Social Seduction. My name is David Snyder. And uh, first and foremost, because sometimes we forget, I'd like to, to give a special thank you to our tech crew in the background, uh, the architects of this the, uh, amazing webinar, uh, Brandon Burr and uh, his uh, amazing assistants, Spencer and Henry Kraus out there. They're in the background making sure that your webinar experience is as smooth and as enjoyable as humanly possible. And I don't look like a complete moron. So that being said, I have a question for you before we get into uh, standard operating procedure and some of the, the housekeeping for today. You all had something in mind that you wanted to learn when you, when you logged into the webinar today. Now, some of you know this, especially if you've been to some of my live trainings and some of you don't, but uh, I do play favorites. And what I mean by that is... Um, the people who come to my live events, and I think this would kind of sort of count because it's interactive, get the best stuff. And so while I always put out information about what I may be teaching in a training or in a video or things like that, once the people are in the room and the doors are closed, to speak, that's when the juicy stuff comes out. That's when I look around and I say to everyone, what do you really want to learn today? So what I'd like you to do, if you would, for just uh, take a minute or two, type in the top two or three things that if you got nothing else out of this webinar, it would be like the best experience ever, right? Just type two or three sentences. And so I know where to direct what we do today, because I have a whole, a whole thing planned out. But if it's not where you guys want to go, then I want to make sure you come out of here feeling like you got the most awesome webinar ever. Okay. Elijah can testify that it's true. Rapport, rapport, stacking realities. Okay. Robert, I am here to learn. God, I hope so. Someone asked about astrology. I'll, I'll leave it up to Brandon or somebody who has uh, faster eyesight than I do to kind of collate these things and see what are the most prevalent uh, things coming up. Someone asked about eliciting values. Very good. Yes, astrology. I have no clue about astrology, but I'll make something up and it'll sound really good. Um, rapport. Okay. Power phrases to use. Okay. Cool. All righty. This is good. Okay, so let me just jump in and let me tell you kind of what I have planned today. And uh, you're going to find out that uh, most of what you're asking will fall into one of three areas that I've discovered, okay? It's either generalized persuasion. In other words, getting people to do what you want them to do. That's pretty much the sum total of everything that, uh, that we're here about. Um, let me give you a little bit about where I started from with this stuff because like many of you, uh, most of the, and I'll, I'll be upfront with this. I didn't, most of the things I'm going to be teaching you guys in this webinar today, and I intend to, to give you as much as humanly possible in the time that we have without like having you guys have your brains dribble out your ears and stuff like that. Having you, um, but one thing before I get into any further, Brand, have a, have a little bit of an echo. Is there anything we can do? About to the thing? Sending energy to someone, same mutus music. I seem to be alone. Hmm. Same mutus. Cortisol empathy. I have no idea what that means. Sounds good here. All right. So many years ago, I, how am I going to start with this? But I was not the, the shining specimen of conversational linguistic mastery you see today. I was pretty much the the, the runt of the litter. If, if, if by runt, I meant, uh, you mean uh, I was about you know, almost 200 pounds. I had bad hygiene. Um, I was picked up by pretty much everybody in my neighborhood. And uh, a lot of things happened to me that that at the beginning, I was a bullied kid. I, I mean, I had a lot of stuff that I came over. Now, I could have had it a lot worse. I don't get me wrong. But the things that I went through were pretty traumatic for me. And I didn't have a lot of social skills. I didn't have a lot of, um, over, uh, of good experiences trusting people. I didn't have, have a lot of, pe of experiences. Um, in fact, I had a lot of experiences where uh, people just 
took advantage of me. And uh, between the bullying and the lying and the desperate need to be uh, accepted, which is uh, people asked about the reptile, that need to be accepted, massive, massive driver to most people's behavior. And anytime you can touch on it, uh, people will make a beeline for what you want them to do. If you if you phrase it in the right way, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to phrase those things later on in the winter. But I want to give you a little bit about where I come from so you understand my driver. I am not an altruist. I know it, I come across that way uh, in a lot of my videos. Uh, I'm a firm believer in enlightened selfishness. Turn off my computer audio. How do I do that? Do I just um, like that? Oh, hey, I don't have an echo anymore coolness. Um, and I had a, I had a bunch of, a, I'll tell you some stories throughout, throughout uh, the course of the webinar, but I, I want to keep on point as much as I can. As any of you know, when I, when I, when I talk, I tend to chase a lot of squirrels. I try to close as many loops as I open, but, um, but I try to kind of, kind of circle back and, and tie it all together for you. Most of the skills that you're going to learn, I'm, I'm not an altruist. I, I just, I know a lot of people buy into that. But um, I believe in I get back what I give, so I, I give as much as humanly possible. Uh, more, much more so than probably um, uh, is good for me by some of my, my some of my peers would say. But I don't care because I learned a long time ago that you, in order to receive from the universe, you have to give to the universe, and you are my universe. You're the you're, my, you're the reason I'm here. But I have to I have to start off by saying the things I I, I am teaching you I did not create for you. I created them for me because time after time, year after year, I would run into one ton brick wall after another, and I'm not somebody who quits. Uh, I'm somebody who, if, if something it gets in my way, I will find a way over, around, through, underneath. I will, I will just keep studying and researching uh, until I find a way to it, and I will constantly be honing that. And so what you're getting in this webinar, for me at least, is the world according to David. Now, many of the things that I'll be teaching you, you may have heard from other teachers, and that's cool. You may hear a slight differently, slightly different spin on it. Everything I'm gonna share with you in this webinar is real world proven. That's why we call it real world hypnosis and NLP power. My life has been a continual search for personal improvement and power. And, a, and power, in, when I, in my perspective, in my terminology, is really um, the ability to get something done, the ability to make a change. So today, because of the things I discovered, the places I've been, the tragedies and the traumas I've endured, uh, I stand up here in this webinar, uh, very honored, first of all, to have so many of you with me. This is, this is a historic moment for me because I've never done a webinar. I've been on other people's webinars, but I've never done one. I've never hosted one. And to have so many of you come out you know, and, and support this, I, I'm really grateful. And as most of you know who've been to my live trainings, uh, I give as much as I can. Uh, to the people who show that they deserve it, and that's you. So congratulations to you for coming out. Let's talk about some of the things that I'm gonna, I wanna talk to you about today. Um, first and foremost, I have six major areas that I would like to, uh, to touch on, if I may. Um, but are you in the right place? If you've ever been in a situation where you've been bypassed for a promotion, overlooked by someone you wanted to like you more, if you've, you know, um, found yourself dating the same person with a different face over and over and over again. If the same circumstances and situations just keep showing up, then you're in the right place. Okay. This talk is going to teach you some things that you've probably heard in a lot of my webinars in the past. The difference is I'm aiming it directly at you. It's not an audience that you're just kind of peeping into. You're going to have a chance to ask me questions. You're going to have a chance to if we have time and if people want to get to do a couple of hot seats with me, if we have time, uh, we'll even do some, some house cleaning. I'll teach you how to clean up your shit this, in, in this webinar. Uh, I'm getting some, uh, some, are, are people having trouble hearing us or are we still, are we still losing our audio? What's going on? Anything going on there? Okay. So Grant is handling that. Okay. So there are six basic areas that I'm going to cover. These are six bullet points. If you're taking notes, um, Write these things down because um, sometimes I chase squirrels. So the first thing I want to talk, I'm going to talk about six basic components this uh, today, and they're not small. And and the truth is, if 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 this beyond the scope of my arms is the 
the the scope of what we can talk about today we have time for about this much so my commitment to you is i will take you as far as i can in the time that i have and i will show you what to do next and where to go for more if that's what you'd like to do is that fair if it if you think that's fair if you think that's okay uh type yes or go for it in the in the in the chat for me oh lovely i like you already okay so we're going to do this a little bit more structured than my meetup, but we're going to carry a lot of my, my, my same meetup. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Of my, wow. I feel so pretty. <laughs> All right. So here's the first thing. This means I know the answer. Now, obviously, Andy, you can't, uh, you can't raise your hand. Can you raise your hand in the chat? I don't know. <laughs> right? You know what means? This means I know the answer. This means I don't. This means, oh, shit. I hope he doesn't ask me to do that. Right? <laughs> All right. If profanity, colorful metaphors, in... Um, strange and weird language offends you not the right place for you guys <laughs> right um i'm a guy who tells it like it is and and that's cool all right so let me see what else do i need to talk about if you haven't gotten yourself a hot drink if at some point we give you a break go get one and hold it right if you haven't brought your chocolate from now on standard operating procedure when we do a webinar you got to have coffee and chocolate all right and if you're diabetic, get diabetic chocolate. I don't care. But we got to flood you with oxytocin. Oh, he's making a croissant with coffee. I love it. <laughs> you guys rock. Thank you so much. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about today is the, the driver behind all human behavior. Because everybody's here because of something you want. True or not true? Y'all want something. It's probably more than one thing. And that's what we talk about. And the, and the secret to that I want you to apply all of that to what I'm going to be teaching you and, and where to go next. The, fee the driver behind every form of human behavior is feelings. All right. And I make it real simple in the meetups, and I'm going to make it even simpler for you here. There's only two kinds of feelings we got, really, if you think about it. There's feelings we want more of, and there's feelings we want a whole lot fucking less of. And all of our behavior is built around that idea. Built around that idea. So the question is, well, okay, so if all behavior is based around feelings, what the hell do we do about that? Well, the first thing to understand is that human beings have a checklist, a checklist for every single thing that they do, the end result of which is a feeling. Now, when we start managing and, and working with feelings, feelings are, by the way, the most hypnotic process we have. A lot of people say it's language. Well, yes and no. Because it's the it's the state created by the feeling that is that the language triggers. So everything we do is a feeling state. Even though we get there through a visual, we get there through an auditory, we get there through a smell or a taste. The feelings are the state, and this is important. Whether you're coming at it from a, to, to learn this from a purely influence perspective, or from a law of attraction perspective, which I teach a lot of. I, I mean, a lot. Some of you guys have been in some of my advanced energetic classes where we told, we show you how to take the stuff from the the hardcore street level persuasion and influence world and bridge it into that quantum non local phenomena generating mechanism we call the human nervous system. It's really cool, but there's a progression and a body development that has to go into that. And so that's why a lot of the classes that you'll see me teach have prerequisites. Like when we talk about vibrational influence or things like that, you can't get into that class unless you've been through either a uh, killer influence or um, real world hypnosis. The reason is, is because there are certain key modules in those courses that are foundational to the vibrational influence class. And you have to have a certain level of skill set to be able to do that. It's going to go back to state control. You're going to generate feelings in people. One of two very straight. They're not mutually exclusive. There's two ways you're going to generate feelings in people. One is through your own state, your own state, your ability to enter and exit a feeling state as an act of will. Now, some people were asking about rapport. Rapport is a subset of state control. When I was creating the AI system, which we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to give you an overview in a minute of, of the, the key areas I want to talk about or, and go deep dish into one or two of them. Uh, when I was trying to put together my personal system after I realized I had a system for what I did and how I did these things, um, and I'll give you what some, what some of those are in a minute. I know I'm, I'm opening a lot of loops, and I apologize. I'm just too excited today. My state control needs to be changed a little bit. Um, changed a little bit. I was trying. I was in a little bit of a quandary because I was trying to say, well, state control and rapport—they're so important. They're so almost, almost the same, but not quite. 
and I, when I was looking at the hierarchy of what has to come first, because we need a process, we need a procedure. A lot of people who want to learn how to use influence, how to be persuasive and charismatic, they're looking for magic words. They're looking for scripts. I'm here to tell you that the most powerful influence you can exert is through your state. In fact, most some of my students who are on this call will tell you, once you got the state control down, you could literally recite Mary had a little lamb and get 80% of your outcome getting them getting the person you're speaking to or, or communicating with moving towards the direction of what you want them to do it's really cool but it's 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 kind of esoteric uh but it takes some training we have the drills for that uh, but it's one of the things you'll almost never see me teach online you'll see me teach it in some of the courses that we sell but but it's one of the modules that's one of the modules that i keep very very no pun intended very vest be persuade um it's one of those ones that really drives the power of your language it gives you amplitude to the signal so two ways there's two ways that we can start to influence the feeling states of those around us it starts with us the most the more we can enter and exit any feeling state on demand and have that feeling transmit and convey through a, a person's proprioceptive nervous system or um, their mirror neurons to another human being, the more their system becomes primed to filter reality in a way that's conducive to our outcome. I mean, it's impossible to get caught, um, and it's completely ethical. It's completely honest. So when we talk about feelings, we have to really start to think about feelings in a different way. We need to start looking at feelings as the primary reason we do everything. All forms of human behavior uh, are based on this idea of feelings. They're either feelings we want. We generate behaviors to get more of those feelings, or we generate behaviors to get more, blah, 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 blah. feelings to get away from those be, or those things. How do you control your feelings better than without just lying to yourself? Well, first of all, we don't lie to ourselves. We have to understand what our feelings actually are. Our feelings are a navigation system. They're a system. They're a, they're a, a navigation system that allows us to understand what vibrational mode we're in. The, we we think that we're at the mercy of our feelings. That's actually not true. Uh, it's at, it, it's true for people who haven't been trained. And when I say trained, that's the vast majority of people. We're taught to try and control our states through acts of will. Not the best way to do that. Uh, your willpower is like the junk food of the mind. It's the first to check out. It's a finite resource. But your state, your 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 physical body posture. The breathing pattern. You see me talk about this. These are the things, and you can test it over and over and over again. You put someone in a highly emotionally charged state, uh, and you have them try to exert control over themselves as an act of will. It's very hard, and they're gonna they're gonna clock out really quick. The more intense that state comes, but if you can get them to change their posture and breathing, you're gonna find out really really quick that it's much harder to access unresourceful states as long as you remember to hold your posture and your breathing. Systema is probably the art that. Uh, really emphasizes this more than any other one. Uh, that's why I, I've spent so much time studying it. Is um, I wouldn't consider. I, I love Sistema, first of all, but and for and for a hypnotist, I think Sistema is probably one of the better arts to study uh, because of its integration of breath and neuro and neurological functioning. Um, depending on what what school of Sistema you study, that'll get more esoteric or, or more or more scientific. But Everything they're doing in Russian Sistema bridges dramatically into all the change work, all the energy work, all the influence work that I teach. But it gives you a way to develop that state control. But not just a state control where that state is locked within you and you can't do anything else with it but control yourself. It actually allows you to transfer your state to another human being. Uh, and we were doing those exercises long before I started studying Sistema. But when I got into Sistema, everything just exponentiated. So... There's a tremendous amount of stuff behind this, but you don't need to understand all of the things, all the inner workings of it to make it work. And that's an, actually a, a good point while I'm on this. There's a part of you that is going to want to try to cognitively get everything I'm teaching. You're going to want to know the whys, the wherefores. You're going you're gonna, you're to want to know how to build the car before you can drive it, and you don't need to do that. Okay. In much of what I teach, it's designed to just get in the car, turn the key, and go. You don't need to, to understand all the theories and principles behind why an adverb adjective presupposition works best when it's in front of this, that, or the other thing. You don't need to know why your nervous system processes everything that comes in as true and then decides whether it's true or not later in the process. You don't need to know why that is in order to use it. Does that make sense? So 
<clears throat> um, first and foremost, feelings. That's the first thing I want to talk. We're going to cover a little bit. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about on my list of things I want to talk about is what I call the secret human passcode to controlling and influencing the minds of and emotions of others. Okay, we're going to talk about the hidden in plain sight backdoor into a person's mind that allows you to hack their thoughts and direct their emotions and instantly create trust, chemistry and connection pretty much on contact. And that sounds really hypey, but it's more true than not. And when I tell you which technique it is, you're going to laugh. Um, formulas for unstoppable influence. This is kind of one that I don't teach all that often um, because they're usually each one of these. I'm going to there's three formulas that I, I look at or I teach. Actually, there's a fourth one that I, I'm going to put on here because I saw somebody ask about it um, in the questions, and that's stacking realities. If we get to that, we'll talk about it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll point you at some resources where you can learn more about stacking realities. Stacking realities is just another way of uh, saying pacing and leading, which is NLP jargon. Um, let's see here. So we're going to talk about three formulas for unstoppable influence. The first one is what I call the, the, the critical path of influence or the six phase universal persuasion protocol. The third one, the second one is rather is how to make people like, love and trust you in as little as 20 minutes. We know that as three magic questions. OK, uh, and then we're going to talk about one that I don't teach nearly as often uh, to the public um, as I do the other two. And this is one that allows you to get people who just told you they didn't want to do something to generate a reason for actually wanting to do it and then leveraging that to, uh, to get them to move forward. So this is something that if you're working in, in areas like negotiation, mediation, uh, areas like addictions or life coaching, or even uh, pretty much anything where somebody tells you, I don't wanna do that, right? For whatever reason, smoke cessation, perfect. This is actually textbook made for smoke cessation. Um, this particular conversational framework will allow you to cause them to resist themselves right into doing what you want them to do. It's kind of what it does. It's, it's sneaky in a very ethical way. Nothing we're going to be teaching you is evil, if that makes any kind of sense. It's actually some of the most ethical, honest, and powerful ways to communicate with a human being. I can't write that down fast enough. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually have a, uh, some notes that I've got here. If people want, I will clean them up a little bit, and I'll post them as a PDF. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, uh, but I'm going to show you uh, where to go for in-depth stuff, you know, a follow-up on this. So those are the things that, uh, that and I have two more that I'm going to tell you. I'm going to teach you how to clean up your shit, shit being a technical term, mind you, Speci specialized hypnotic influence technologies. I can't, I covered my notes. I can't see who's, what you're writing here. Okay. Okay, and then the last and last and but not least, um, before we go today, I'm going to show you how to take all of this interesting information and turn it into unstoppable persuasion. That's my goal. All right, but remember, if you learn to pay, there's two. When I when I when I first when I launched my first book, my first ebook or e-course back in uh, 2005, it's called Secret Orgasm Tips. Some of you may have have that or have read about it. There was a a, a chapter in there called How to Make Any Form of Attraction, Seduction, or Pickup Work for You. And it started with pay attention. Pay attention is going to be the single biggest thing you can learn to develop. That attribute will give you the master key to unlock everything else that I teach. Okay? Pay attention. Remember that everything human beings do is in response to a feeling. If you know what you want somebody to do, and the next question you ask is, what do they have to feel in order for them to decide to do that on their own? Because it's the feeling states that create the filters to reality that cause them to process your language in favor of what you want them to do. Right? And in, in meetups, I've talked about the emotional refractory period. Um, this is, and when we talk, and when we get, when you get to killer influence, which is the next step beyond basic conversational hypnosis that I teach, uh, we go into the whole field of hypnotic operators where we talk about proxemic hypnotic operators, you know, how to take control of a meeting or a negotiation just by where you sit, you know, at the, um, at the table, how to make someone like you more by standing on their dominant side versus their, their non-dominant side, uh, how to structure the environment so that people automatically, you psychologically position yourself in the minds of somebody without ever opening your mouth. 
things like having you hold a warm drink will cause people to like you more, more the longer they hold that drink. Uh, people will agree with you more. If you give them a heavy clipboard to hold while you're presenting to them, they will agree with you more. If you, pre if you give them a heavy clipboard, not a light one. Um, weird, weird physical stuff you can do that changes how people process reality. But these are advanced studies. It all, and it's all going to go back to feeling. Once you have feelings, you have the ability to modulate perception. Once you have perception, it's only a short time before you hit belief. It's a feedback loop. Okay, so that's kind of what I've got for you to do uh, in, in, in terms of what I've got lined up today. Um, so let's see here. Where do I want to start? Let's talk about um, – we talked about feelings a little bit. Let's talk about the human passcode to controlling and influencing the minds of others. Now, if you've got any – how many people here have actually have a background in NLP? Does anybody – if you have one, just type it in the, in the, in the chat box. You don't have to. It's actually – actually, I won't hold your training against you. It, won't, it tends to slow you down a little bit. All right. Very cool. All right. There is a, a process or a, a phenomena that we learned in NLP training, and it was really the, the guy who really brought this out uh, into the business world was a guy by the name of Kenrick Cleveland. Now, you've heard me talk about Kenrick many times before. Um, if there were a god of conversational hypnotic persuasion in my world, uh, it would be Kenrick Cleveland. I, I truly believe he is, he is uh, just the, the, the go-to guy for a lot of stuff. I've studied with a lot of great people. I mean, I, and I, I give credit to all of them, even the notorious ones, even the ones who claim to hate my guts, even the ones who, who post weird things on my YouTube channel, like, next time I see you, I'm going to fart down your throat. Very weird, I know. But hey, that's just the way it is. I love you all, and I thank you all for the things you've taught me. But the one thing that you can always count on is that human beings human being things that support their sense of identity. They do things that give them feelings of – that give them positive feelings about themselves. Now, in NLP, there's a phenomena or a set of beliefs we call criteria and values. I'll go slower. Criteria and values. Now, criteria and values uh, we, uh, is, it, it, it's, uh, I think I teach it in Master Practitioner when we talk about logical levels of belief. You have different your, – your belief systems have a hierarchy to them. And many times when people talk about who they are and what they do, you will hear things like if you ask – and we talk about this in Three Magic Questions. When people talk about um, – you ask them what they do for a living. They say, I am an accountant or um, I'm a body worker, or I'm an energy healer, or I'm a neuro-linguistic programmer, or I'm a police officer. Anytime you hear something prefaced by a term, I, I am, what you're hearing is an identity statement. And that identity statement means that in that hierarchy of beliefs that you have, and there's about six or seven different levels to it, that belief is almost at the top with transpersonal or spiritual being the highest, and then identity being below that, and then you have the values and the criteria and uh, sense of uh, beliefs, capabilities, environment, deservingness. These are all things that the, the further down the, that level of belief that you go, um, the weaker they become in relation to the ones up top. The higher you go, the more you control the things below. And that's why this is important in terms of both feelings and in terms of uh, understanding why people do what they do. Criteria and values – Criteria and values form the building blocks. They're their beliefs. They form the building blocks of your identity. And of, of the functional component to this, and this is functional persuasion. This is not theoretical. This is all functional. And, there's, and because I work in the medical field, I can tell you there's a huge difference between laboratory, academic uh, medicine, and functional medicine. We're here to learn how to get shit done. So I'm here. I'm going to give you the most powerful stuff right off the bat, and that is feelings. And then the fastest way to get them, okay? Fastest way to get them is through a process called criteria and values. Criteria and values has three pieces to it. Now, this is a little bit of a different parsing than we might see in a traditional NLP class. Um, and I, I wish I had a way to, to type things in, but um, uh, values and criteria have three components. They have a checklist. The checklist is the most overlooked piece of the criteria and values equation. You have a checklist, you have a, a feeling, 
and a label. So there's a set of parameters that have to be met. When those feelings are, or those parameters are met, a feeling is generated and we call that feeling X, a label. So let's say for example, that, uh, and, I, and you've heard me use this in meetups and, and things like that in the past. Let's say that we have two people and their highest criteria, one of their highest criteria in a relationship or value in a relationship is respect, right? You have person A over here and you ask them, well, how do you know when you're getting respect? How do you know uh, when someone's showing you the respect that you need? And aside from the, is it visual, auditory, kinesthetic, that's really kind of secondary to what we do. Um, and when, you'll find out why when we get to step three, which is the hidden back door into every person's neurology. You ask them, how do you know when you're being respected? Say, well, I know you respect me when you take my feeling, or you take my feelings into consideration and you, you phrase things in such a way that you know won't make me feel bad about myself or hurt my feelings. That's how I know you respect me. Fine. Ask person, uh, person C or person B. How do you know when you're being respected? How do you how do you how do you calibrate respect in a relationship? And that person says, "Well, I know you respect me when you tell me the truth. When you you know you don't you don't mince words. You don't you don't soft soap it. You don't whitewash it. You just tell me the fucking truth because you know that's what I need to hear. That's how I know you respect me. Now take it take, think for a moment. What happens when these two people get in an argument? They're it's it's not going to take long before neither one's feeling respected." And they're all accusing the other person of not respecting them. What you've got is a classic rules violation, right? The checklist hasn't been met. They're, they're matching on the value, on the, on the label level and the feeling they get when that label's met. But the problem is the checklist. That checklist is exactly the thing that cooks the rice. Now, you can talk about a person's values and get a huge amount of rapport a huge amount of interest and attention, which is important, by the way. Attention is the currency of relationships. Remember that, whether it's a business relationship, a negotiation, an interpersonal relationship, a familial relationship between you and your children. The currency of relationships is always attention. And to the degree that you neglect that and you don't feed that, is it's going to come back to haunt you. If a child can't get your attention one way, I guarantee it, damn tea, she'll get it or he'll get it another way and vice versa, right? Your spouses are the same way. If they can't get the kind of attention that they need, keyword, they need from you in the way that they recognize that they're getting it, they will act out in all sorts of ways. And this is the crux of a lot of our problems is we have, we match on a labels level. Respect, respect. But on that checklist level, on that checklist level, we're not matching. It's like we talk about fruit, right? Someone says, I want some fruit. So I reach over, I grab an orange, and I hand it to them. And they say, I don't want that. So what do you mean? You said you wanted fruit. No, I want an apple. They go over and they grab an apple. Now I feel better, right? On one level, we're talking about the same thing. But on a functional level, we're talking about. needs versus wants. These are actually, G. Ray, when you talk about needs versus wants, it really doesn't matter at a values level. They're, they're pretty much the same. Um, people's values will either tend to move them towards something they want more of and away from something they want less of or vice versa. It'll move them away from something they want less of and towards something they want more of. Notice I didn't, I, it wasn't an either or thing. When, those have, when the towards and the away from are together, we have what NLP likes to refer to as a complete propulsion system. It's just a question of which do they pay attention to first? What is the priority that they sort for? And these are the things that you, sh you as an influencer should be paying attention to on a meta level because they're things that are hidden in plain sight. They're ways that people structure and frame their reality. And it's out in their sure words. And when you match it, someone asked about stacking realities. This is a subtle form of stacking realities because once you match a person's meta program, they start to think and relax more. They start to feel more understood. They start to communicate more fluidly. Stacking realities, Jay, is where you call attention to things that are sensorily verifiable or cognitively verifiable. I'll give you a little bit of an example later on. And if they can't articulate what specifically they want, they'll know when they get it. Then you ask them another question. This is one I, I credit this with uh, my good friend, James C2. 
uh, when they don't, when they can't articulate what they want, ask them, what are you not getting? What are you not getting? And more often than not, that flips it right around. Right? People are experts on what they don't want. They're experts on what they don't got. But like a lot of times when you're out on a date and you ask your, your wonderful date, which is you should never decide, which is the way if you're a man taking a woman out on a date, never, where do you want to go tonight, honey? Okay, just pick a place. And if she doesn't like it, she'll tell you, right? What are you not getting allows that person to fill in all the things they're not getting because your neurology is weighted that way. It's adaptive. It's evolutionary. You respond more to the things that aren't being met than the things that are. Okay, it moves the neurology forward. So what you're not getting is a great question. What is it you don't want? The minute you say, what is it you don't want? Oh, they'll tell you. And then you can just flip it and start to work that way. The secret to this, though, if you really want to make it functional, is how to drill down to the emotional level with it, but also using their words, which is phase three, the back door into everybody's neurology. Um, I think I got open looped a little bit with the, the pacing and leading and the, the articulating, the stacking realities. Did I answer that question? Type yes, please, so I know. Are you, is this good so far? Are you guys having fun with this? Yeah. Yeah, I get nervous because I'm a, in case you haven't figured it out, I'm a bit of a ham and I'm a whore for feedback. And one of the things that uh, I, I kept, I was telling Brandon about this at the beginning of the, before the webinars. One of the reasons I didn't do webinars for many years is because I can't see you. <laughs> I can't interact. And if I can't take your temperature, I don't know if you're getting it or not. So I'm going to be asking you left and right to just keep doing stuff and you just keep doing it. You'll be fine. Uh, Cause I'm very insecure and I need all the feedback I can get. Um, so thank you, Oscar. I will keep it up as much as humanly possible. You guys are rocking. I like this. Um, so criteria and values, everything that a human being does has a checklist that is connected and generates a feeling when it's met. When it's met, they have a feeling, they call that feeling X. Now that feeling could be love, it could be freedom, it could be safety, it could be security. All of that is important. Understand, all of that is important because everything we want is about getting to that feeling. Now here's the rub. Sorry if this shakes a little bit, I like putting, I like putting my arms up. Um, this is important, write this down, tattoo it on the inside of your eyelids because if you understand it, I mean, if you understand it, uh, you can pretty much write your own ticket in just about every aspect of your life. Human beings cannot violate their own values and criteria without experiencing intense emotional pain. Conversely, they cannot have their criteria met without experiencing tremendous pleasure and rapport. And every single thing a human being does has a checklist that allows them to recognize that it's exactly right for them in their world. And they're always projecting it onto the people around them. They're always projecting it onto the people around them. I have taught this one simple idea, this one simple concept over and over again, all over the world. And every time I do, 20, 30, 40, 50% increases in conversions to and closing rates, massive conversions in relationships. When I say conversions, I mean people becoming couples, people feeling more satisfied in a relationship. Every single thing a human being does, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute, James. Every single thing a human being does has a checklist. In fact, it was one of the things that caused that, that allowed me uh, in 2005 to uh, to become nominated, I think it was 2005, yeah, as one of the top 10 attraction and seduction experts by Art of Approaching and, and SeductionLayer.com magazine. It was the realization that when it comes to lovemaking, to relationships, every human being on the planet has a checklist. And they're projecting that checklist out onto everyone around them. I'll tell you, uh, William, I'll tell you how to, how to determine what is on the checklist in just a moment. It's contextual, but it's actually simple. Okay. We're going to start with what I call, no pun intended, entry level criteria and values. And then we'll show you how to dig down deeper. But if I, if I spend all the time on criteria and values, I may not get to the other four, three or four points. So I'm going to leave it up to you, you know, what you want me to do. Is that okay?
type type something so I know. Oh, John is John is already there. Yeah, human beings cover everything. Okay, John. <laughs> John can say that because he has all of my videos. He's ha he's uh he's one of our Mondo Supremo package members, so he's got access to all the stuff. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is um, so when you're when you're drilling down, the first layer of criterion values. The first layer of criterion values is always the order and sequence of the words that come out of their mouth. This is the hidden in plain sight back door into a person's mind that allows you to hack their thoughts and direct their emotions, instantly create trust, chemistry, and connection pretty much on anyone, anytime, anywhere. It's the one I use most often. It's the one I teach most often. And honestly, it's the most powerful because you can use it anywhere, anytime, completely ethically, completely honestly. People will feel tremendously understood. They'll feel heard. They will be, they will find you and to be the most fascinating person in their world, if not in the, you know, if not in the world, in the room, in their world. And that's a big, that's a big piece of real estate to hold. And it's the Edison entry point. Now, I don't know what your backgrounds are in, uh, in conversation that knows that you're an NLP, but you, you don't need to know any of that. If you just understand uh, and the uh, and human neurology, the human nervous system is designed to search for whatever it projects out into the universe. In other words, if I say, um, um, well, I'll just get really, I'll just get really um, silly about it. If I say Mary had a little lamb and someone looks at me and says, oh, Mary had a little lamb. My neurology will go, oh, he's just like me. And the neurology will just zero in. It'll just pay attention and it'll cleave to the source of that reflection back. We call that the echo technique. It's also the entry level point into the entry level criteria and values because no matter how super, no matter how superficial the languaging is, it's always either more directly or less directly connected to the emotional drivers that are driving their behavior. It's never not true. I, I, it just, it just isn't. Um, the real, the only real variable is how direct or indirect the connection is. And, and things are indirect like that, um, they're going to teach you a very kind of invasive, actually, uh, elicitation process to drill down to the emotional level. The problem with a lot of the NLP stuff isn't that it doesn't work. It's that it works a lot. Search, what I mean by that is it's so powerful and it's so, it goes right to the core of things so quickly that it creates a feeling of violation, a feeling of something's beyond to of me. Something's being done to me, and it creates a term, uh, something we call psychological reactance. Psychological reactance is that unconscious or physical pushback that we get any time we experience influence being exerted on us that we didn't specifically ask for or given to us in a way that is not in harmony with our values and criteria, our checklist specifically. Okay? And there's a lot of traffic going on there. Okay, um, so let's circle back around to criterion values. Values ha criterion values has three components: the checklist, the most important piece to match, the feeling it generates, and the label. Now you can change a person's checklist, believe it or not, in advance in advanced conversation, diagnosis, things like that. We'll show you how to cha change people's values. We'll show you how to change that checklist. The one thing you can't change, though, is the label they use to define it. You can change the parameters that generate the feeling but you can't change the label. So it's really, really important. Uh, and sometimes our values work for us and sometimes they don't. Uh, even uh, And some though they give us good feelings, the hierarchy of our values determines what's important in our life and in what priority. So if you have a value tree that says that freedom, love, safety, uh, tree that's um, creativity and um, money and in that order, the further down that hierarchy you go, the less money you're likely to make. So if you want to make more money, you've got to move those values up in that hierarchy. If you want more love, then you've got to move the love up. Okay? And your values, we, we think our values are fixed. They aren't. You have a software that runs neurology. In another training, we'll talk about that. But a person can't violate those values without experiencing emotional pain. They can't talk about having those values met without experiencing rapport 
and connection. The fastest way to get to them directly or indirectly, no matter how, whether you know this person for two, 10 seconds or 10 years, use their words. The exact words that came out of their mouth are a key to lock fit to their to all the filters in their nervous system. And the more you use it, the more they like you, the more, especially if you use it congruently and sincerely. And that's what I'm saying. This is not, this shouldn't, this isn't a trick that you want to just play on people. You want to use their words every time. And I think I wrote down on my, on my notes here um, in a little bit more scientific -y way to think about it. Um, the human neurology does not resist its own verbal syntax. And that the words its own come out of a person's mouth are a literal code that unlocks their whole neurology. Use their words, use their words, use their words, use their words. When you're doing things like conversational reframes, which we're not going to talk about uh, in this class or in this class, in other classes, we'll talk about sleight of mouth, conversational belief changes, things like that. If you use their words first and then do the reframe, they have far less, they are far more likely to go along with it than if you just say, oh, well, this means Y. So what you're really saying is X. Okay. It's a way of softening and lubricating the change, the change weapon. It's a, these are weapons of influence, but they're tools. Weapons are just tools, tools of influence. You want to change someone's belief, you have to bypass resistance. You have to create within them an environment that wants to accept the change, right? And that's going to go back to feelings. So you're monitoring feelings that way. Use their words to form a building of rapport. Yes, very much so. In fact, some of the best marketing materials that I've ever seen or created were word for word restatements of actual questions, verbatim questions I got from people who, who emailed me or wrote to me. I cannot stress that. I'm, and I don't believe me. Don't believe me. Go out, hear some of the words back to them, and notice what happens. You'll see them light up like a Christmas tree. Okay? So that's echo technique. And this is the one that we'll put it all together towards the end. Um, let's talk about uh, formulas for unstoppable influence. Now, I have three that I've written here plus the stacking realities formula. So we're going to talk about um, formulas for unstoppable influence. And uh, this is what I call the critical path of influence. This is what there's there's six discrete stages. The, the center of this persuasion is criterion values. So everything that I'm about to, to teach you and about to share with you, you follow literally towards their criterion values. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, maybe some of you can, if we can, on the mic mics later on, we'll have some of you kind of give field reports about how you use this stuff. What about people that talk other languages than English? It doesn't matter. If if the words come out of their mouth, it has been vouched and vetted by every level of their neurology, and therefore it will have the same effect. The only difference will be lag, because every time you you speak to somebody in uh, in a different language, they have to repeat what you just said, translate it, and then create the response. So there will be a lag to it, but it will still have the same effect. It will just happen a little bit slower. How, would you, how is it you speak it nearly identically, right? Well, it's, it's, it's exactly like that. A lot of times, use their exact words. What's terrible, John? You're screwing me up here. You're like very active on these chats, you social butterfly, you. Um, what about people trying to hide something? It'll still work. Uh, the difference will be is that the longer they continue to talk, the more into rapport with you they'll come. As they become deeper and deeper into rapport, they'll find it progressively harder to lie. This is actually one of the side effects when you use the three magic questions protocol, which is the, 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 the formula we're going to follow. Does it sound like a parrot? No, not at all. If you do it right, if you do it congruently, right? Remember, this isn't a technique or a trick that we're playing. Okay, um, I'm getting I, I'm I'm getting the the uh, <laughs> I'm getting the pro the prompt to stay on script. All right, um, let's talk about these formulas for you. The first one is called this the the universal persuasion protocol, the critical path of influence, six stages. First one, write this down: state control. Control your state. Next thing you want to do. Get rapport. Step three, use your language. Whatever languaging technique you know. If all you know is echo technique and three magic or three magic questions, that's what you use. If all you know is stacking reality, that's what you use. 
But the fastest, most easiest way to move seamlessly through the persuasion process is to echo, to use their exact words the way they use them as often as possible. Okay. And you don't have to use every single word. Uh, it means use as much of their words as you can where it fits. And what you'll discover, and I've done, I've, I've demonstrated this on many, 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 many videos. So you can go to YouTube and you can watch them. And you can watch me do it right with the audience over and over again. Um, we'll get to three magic questions, Oscar. I promise it's next. But we want to finish this particular algorithm. It's a persuasion algorithm. It's a formula that you follow. See, one of the problems that we have in things like Ericksonian hypnosis or NLP or a lot of sales training is they're teaching you all of these thousands or no, not thousands, but hundreds of techniques. But they're not giving you which one to use when. And that is why a lot of people who learn things like NLP, who learn things like Ericksonian hypnosis or derivatives, can't actually use this stuff out in the field. They don't know where to start and what to do next. So I'm giving you the universal persuasion protocol. Once you get really good at this, you can eliminate half of the steps and you'll still close 80 to 90% of the situations that you're in. And when I say close, I mean get your outcome, get what it is you came for. Okay. So control your state, get rapport, use your language, manage their state. You use the first three steps of the persuasion formula to manage the state they're in. You create within them an environment that is conducive to filtering and um, processing your message in the way that's right and appropriate to your getting your outcome. But you want to find out what they want too. And that's why criteria and values is important. This is never a win-lose situation. We're always trying to find out what people want, know how they know that they're getting it, and then keep them connected to the, the aspect of us, relationship, product, or service that fully satisfies that checklist. So everything is about getting the person you're speaking to the best experience possible for them. Because in the process of doing that, you're going to get what you want. I tell people in Killer Influence and uh, even in Rapid Attraction Secrets, move through the world making everyone around you feel ridiculously good, and people will just give you stuff. I mean, literally, people will just give you stuff because it feels good to have you around. Uh, and you'll find you'll never have to look over your shoulder. You'll never have to worry about who's going to stab you in the back, um, who's looking for payback. Because using criteria and values, guys, it is very, very possible to uh, to get people to do things that are not in their best interest. And so, you know, you take responsibility. This is powerful stuff. This is powerful stuff. Uh, and I have used it literally, literally. This thing paid my entire, paid for my entire undergraduate education. Literally, I went through my entire undergraduate education. I got a, a degree in business management on writing scholarships. I was the only work study with his own office. I was hired by both my my undergraduate college and my graduate school as a recruiter for the school. Uh, I was nominated to uh, National Honor Society. I graduated with honors I didn't apply for. When I talk about how powerful this stuff is, I'm telling you exactly what it can do, and it even gets crazier. Um, not to mention what we were able to do with the relationship field. Um, criterion values, echo technique. The six-stage protocol is, is what cooks the rice. So remember, control your state, get rapport, use your language, use, it, use those three steps to manage the, the target's emotional state. If necessary, jump into their process. When I mean process, what is the exact series of steps that they do when they go about successfully doing what you want them just to do? This is where stacking realities would come in, if you, for those of you who know what that means. I don't spend a lot of time on that particular phase anymore because echo technique usually takes care of it automatically. How did I manage my clients by controlling their state? By controlling mine and finding out what they really wanted and showing them how to uh, dissociate or disidentify from the state, go to a meta state, change the, the coding system by which they were creating that state and show them they had control over it. That's how I did it. Uh, getting back to the last part, and it's the last part you already know. I began with that. Criteria and values. Once you have them in the state that is conducive to where you want them to go, and you've jumped into their process, everything gets targeted 
on their criteria and values. All right. Now, again, if I had, I don't, we don't have the, the screen sharing capability up yet. Otherwise, I have a whole target diagram that I would show you that I could explain in detail for how this algorithm works. My point, though, is no matter what situation you're in, from the classroom to the treatment room to the boardroom to the bedroom, I don't care if you're a mediator, hostage negotiator. I don't care if you're out there trying to find Mr. or Mrs. right now or Mr. or Mrs. right. I don't care if you're a life coach. NLP trainer, if you want to be able to exert the maximum amount of influence to the most amount of people leveraged in a clean, easy way that you just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, that is it right there. You can use it anywhere, anytime, for any reason. I have not found a situation in any, um, in any circumstance where this didn't work. Okay. Um, we're coming up on five. We started at 4.30, right? So we're actually a little bit over. We're running a little bit over. Um, so let's do this. Um, let me see what I want to do here. All right. Well, we, we, um, all right. I, I have time for two more things um, before I get into where I want to go. So I'm going to give you guys a choice. Do you guys want to focus on... Uh, Three magic questions, resistance removal, or cleaning up your shit. What do you think? Where, where do you want to go with that? Show me what you got. Um, oh, I see where we're going. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Very cool. All right. So first and foremost, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into resistance removal. I'm going to teach, I'm going to, and I'm going to cover the last bullet, which is um, how to go from interesting information to irresistible persuasion. And then for those of you who want to stick around, um, we'll come back and we'll clean up. We'll do some cleaning up. Is that fair? Cool. All right. So let's go. Let's jump in. Remember something. Remember I talked about NLP is extremely powerful, uh, and that's one of the problems is it's too powerful. When people experience persuasion, any influence at persuasion that they didn't ask for, whether it's physical, someone pushing you, or somebody saying, hey, you ought to do this, we automatically go into what I call the fuck you factor. And the fuck you factor is that instinctive say, I don't want to do it because somebody told me to do it. I don't want to go here because somebody's pushing me, even if it's something I know would help me. You've all had this experience, right? You have somebody, right? Nice. They acknowledge it, thank you for it, and then fucking ignore you anyway. Welcome to the wonderful world of psychological reactants, right? That's your wife. <laughs> I have some. I have some really cool fixes for that. Um, in the in some of this in, in the thing I'm going to talk about in a minute, um, you're going to find some really cool master keys for really smoothing out your relationships. Is she the fuck you factor? Many times she is, right? Uh, Fucking run into this so many times. Yeah, this is one of the reasons is because they didn't ask for the influence. They didn't ask you for it. See, one of the problems, and this is a sidebar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brandon. He's dri I'm driving him nuts because I'm doing all these little scroll chasing things. But one of the things you guys got to understand is there's a dramatic difference the way males process and troubleshoot their, their problems and women deal with them. Okay. And from a man's perspective, the problem with men is that we're really simple. And the problem with men for women is that we're really simple. <laughs> and that doesn't equate in the world. Men, women are very complex creatures. They're awesome creatures. Um, but they process reality differently. Um, and again, I, I don't, there's so much I want to talk to you guys about. If, I wish I could just download it all into your freaking heads. I really do. Um, the one thing you want to get is that when you could, guys, when you come home from work, and the first thing out of your, your, your lover's head or your wife's head is all the problems she had today. You might have had this experience. She, she outlines all the shit she had to deal with today. And then the first thing you do is, well, did you do this? Did you do that? You should have done that. Maybe you did this. What, how about we do this? And she gets all pissed off at you. Right? Anybody ever have that? Okay. You know why? You insulted her intelligence. You didn't get it. You might have heard that too, right? <laughs> G Ray, three ex wives. <laughs> you need this, brother. You got to understand something. When, when you come home, two things. Uh, when a woman gets stressed out, she gets really, really nitpicky. 
that's a neurological phenomenon not a it's not a gender it's a gender thing but it's based on neural neural research when men get uh tense they get more global they get just cut to the fucking bottom line don't give me the details just get to the point women go the other way they get really really my, you know, they get focused on the minutia. When a woman comes home and she starts telling you all the things that went wrong today, she is not, not asking you to solve her problem for her. That's a man think. She's more than smart enough. Chances are she's already solved it. What she does want you to sit there is already listen and let her vent until she's done. If all you did was that, oh, Genesis, Genesis knows what I'm talking about, right? They build up so much emotion that has to come out. They're on the inside, come out. They're the outside for her. They're stronger than we are on the inside, but that veggie has to go somewhere on the outside for her. We have is somewhere. And as we see it, we fix it. We see it, we kill it. We, if it moves and it smells like a female, we try to do you know what with it as often as we can. We're too simple, right? We think in cause and effect terms. Women, not so much. They do cause and effect, but everything we do has a meaning in their world. When a woman comes home and she starts venting, she starts spewing you, giving her the, the, the laundry list of all the things that happened today and how she dealt with it and what she did and how she felt. All she wants you to do is listen and signal to her that you understand. Seriously, if you do anything other than that, she'll get pissed. She'll feel insulted. She'll feel like. You're not getting it. And if you've ever read into that, that phrase, if you've ever read into that phrase, that's what happened. Remember, when a woman comes to you and starts running like that, all she wants is to, to jettison the emotion she's carrying or ranting around. And all you have to do is, and you know what you have to do, the simplest thing to do? Touch her on the arm or, you know, in a way that, you know, shows you're paying attention. Echo her words back to her. And say, I understand. And you'll be amazed at what happens. I had that happen to me the other day. My wife is a brilliant, brilliant woman who has so much. Um, she's very, very neat. She's very, very organized. And I am in a fucking amoeba. I, 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 I walk in and I just spread all over the house. That's her nickname for me is the amoeba. And, uh, and she came home. And the more clutter there is, the less, the less she can think. And she starts going off about how that this, that we need to do this and we need to do that. And we need to do this and we need to do that. And she starts going off on me a little bit uh, on, uh, you know, how I need to clean up the room. You know what I did? I said, you're right. And I echoed her words exactly back to her. She felt so happy, so heard. She shut up. I didn't hear from her for the rest of the night. Right? If I'd have gone into man think, I'd have started arguing. Well, I'm, I'm it's not, I, I left it there because of this, and I left it there because of that, and it's doing this because of this. Because, 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 because. Right? That's the wrong language pattern when you're dealing male to female. The right language pattern, <laughs> Nora just had that argument. The right language pattern, is, if you know anything about the, the seven that we teach, is complex equivalence, but the back door is echo technique. People need to feel heard. They need to feel like they have an ally. They need to feel that the person they're communicating with gets them. They need to feel, they need to feel them. They feel more like you, and you they feel you're more like them. And we we bond with people who are like us. It's a fun. It's as, it's as solid and rocks and 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 as reliable as the laws of physics. And the only secret, the only the only variable in making this work, that I have found is time. It will work, sometimes right away, sometimes in a few minutes, but the longer you continue to do it, even if they catch you, that's one of the big, the big. Um, fallacies I like to say that NLP kind of. Um, pervades is that if you get caught doing these kinds of things, uh, it will actually cause the opposite, break rapport, only if you stop doing it. Because the moment you stop doing what they say they caught you doing, you're admitting you were doing something. You've bought into their frame. So just, but if you, if you adopt this way of moving through the world as a lifestyle, it's just how you relate to people because you know it's 
So just to do it, there's nothing for you to catch. And if somebody's going to going to find fault with you for being you, for being ethical and honest and wanting to actually communicate in the deep mode. So just understanding, understanding, facilitating way possible, that's their problem, right? The, thing, the comments people make say more about the person making them than they ever do about the person they're directed at. So keep that in mind. We're always, always, always projecting our internal environment onto the people around us. And as weird as this sounds and as counterintuitive as you can, in situations you can come up with, it will always be that way, regardless of how foul the things coming out of their mouth are. It's really, <laughs> I've done, I've tested this shit in ways you can't possibly imagine. Um, and it's just, it's, it's over and over and over again, echoing, echoing what comes out creates movement. Yes, it's actually, it's uh, in fact, you got to be careful with people who are mentally ill because they will bond to you so powerfully. You may have a stalker on your hands. So remember, uh, Everything I'm teaching you is powerful, it's proven, and anything that has power can go in any direction. So it's really up to you. I'm not a persuasion cop, guys. You guys know this. Um, use these things in strict compliance with your own sense of ethics and morals, right? Use this stuff to go through the world making everyone you feel or everyone you meet feel ridiculously good, and the world will open its arms to you. That I, I can't I can't say that enough. You'll get everything you want. That's my job. My job is to show you what's possible, to stop people from suffering. And if the technologies I developed for me can do that for you, I'm I'm happy to share them. That's why we gave spinning to the world. You guys know what spinning is? Right? Yeah. Spinning was uh, another one of the, those universal wake up calls. I, again, I, I don't want to I don't want to get off track. Oh, so you don't know what spinning is? We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. Um, let's go on to the next piece. What was I talking about? Oh, so that's the six phase protocol resistance removal. If somebody tells you they don't want to do something, what they're experiencing many times is reactance. Any attempt that you make to rhetorically argue them into submission may result, may result in them giving you the verbiage and, and, and basically browbeating them into uh, agreement, but you will generate all sorts of passive aggression, aggressive behaviors, all sorts of resistance to it. So here's the, here's the underlying secret to this. Whenever you want to begin to generate, the, the most powerful reason a person can have for doing something they don't want to do is their own. Write that down. The most powerful and compelling reason a person can have for doing something they don't want to do is their own. Here's another principle that goes along with the, the protocol I'm going, to, I'm going to teach you. The rationalization that gets defended gets reinforced. Understand that? The rationale that a person is forced to defend becomes stronger. That's why in NLP they teach you never, ever, ever ask why questions. Why-based questions activate the part of your neurology that generates rationalizations. From a neurolinguistic standpoint, the linguist is the wrong kind of information. Okay. So let me give you an example. So, uh, you know, let's see, how, how do I, what's the, what's the cleanest way to do this? I think I'll give you the steps and then I'll, I'll kind of flesh out an example for you and you can see how it applies. So the first thing that has to happen when most people are trying to be convinced into doing something, what they actually are undergoing are attacks on their sense of personal autonomy or freedom. Any attack on your sense of personal freedom, your, 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 your ability to self-direct your life, generates reactance. Now, if you've read uh, Robert Cialdini's book, uh, Psychology, or Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, he talks a lot about um, scarcity and reactance and, and things like that. I highly, highly recommend you pick up that book. Again, we don't have all the time to go into all the, the subject material. The rationale that a person is forced to defend gets reinforced. If that's true, then we need to cause them to generate a rationale for them to reinforce. That is in harmony with what we want them to do. 
So the first, but the first thing you have to do, well, thinking is rationalization, right? There's a, there's, there's a level of thinking where we talk about the whys, the justifications for doing what we do or thinking the way we think. But then there's the process. How are those thoughts built? And that's what NLP wants to spend most of its time doing, because if we can attack or, or modify the structure that our thoughts are built from, that we can change everything else automatically, right? It's kind of like um, if you're watching a movie on television and you turn the volume down. Well, you haven't changed the story. You've changed the structural component of the experience. If you're watching a movie and you turn the brightness knob until the screen whites out completely, you have a much different experience of that storyline than if the screen were clear. That's what NLP is doing most of the time is it's going to the next level uh, the foundational level of how we've built those thoughts that we're thinking, right? How we think is much more important than what we think. Okay. The rational that, the, yeah, the rational that gets defended gets reinforced. When you are creating, I, I, we call this the autonomizer formula because the first thing you have to do is restore a, sen a person's sense of right to choose. You have to completely validate their point of view and their freedom to choose to do to not do what you've asked them to do. So I might say something to the effect of, you know, let's say someone's coming to me for smoke cessation. I say, you know what? I get it. You know, because most people come to, to, to quit smoking aren't really there for them. They're there because somebody has browbeaten them uh, into that particular uh, visit. So I'll say, you know what? I get that you may not want to, uh, you know, you may not want to quit smoking. And I'm totally cool with that. It's your choice. I'm going to support you either way. If you want to actually work with me on something else other than why they, those people forced you to come here, I'm cool with that. If you want to leave, I'm cool with that too. It's your choice. I honor that. I'm, I'm here for you. But I am curious about something. If you were to want to quit smoking, for you, why might you want to do that? See what I just did there? Stage one. Restore their sense of personal autonomy. And then, just so I understand you better, that's what we call a softener. We'll talk about, if we have time, we'll talk about softeners a little bit later. Softeners are one of those nuclear powered ninja conversational hypnosis techniques that makes everything work a thousand times better and nobody ever talks about it except Kenrick. Um, so I get it. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to support that 100%. So I'm curious if you were to want to stop smoking for your own reasons, why might you want to do that? Pay attention because the moment they say you ask that question, they're going to generate a rationale. Okay. It's just a justification. It may have nothing to do with what's capital T true. But whatever comes out of their mouth, you agree with and you echo. You agree with it and you echo and as much as you can support it. Watch their facial expressions. They're expecting you to argue. Right? Once you see that, the next thing that's going to happen is you look at them and you say, so I'm curious, on a scale of 0 to 10, how much might you want to do that Would, and repeat back whatever the words were that they used as close to verbatim as you can, as close to verbatim as you can. They're going to give you a number and they're already, they're already in their head anticipating what you're going to say next, which is what really screws them up because the next thing that comes out of your mouth, they're going to give you a number. Let's say they say, well, it's a, a four, right? Four, awesome. So I have a question for you. And then, and right in, and at, at this time in their mind, they go, no, I know what you're going to ask me, motherfucker. You go, I'm curious about something. Why didn't you rate it less? Why so much? Why do you want that so bad? And you'll see them go, what? They'll literally do a double take. And like, uh, and you'll see the eyes go back and forth. And they'll say, well, and they'll start to give you a reason why. And in the act of giving you the reason why they rated it, what they rated it, 
their desire to do it will go up. And yes, the, the, the protocol is derived from uh, Michael Pamelon's book, Instant Influence. I think I've mentioned that several times. But here's the cool part. Is it VI? Because of the way the neurology works, you can even use this on pain. Or V, sorry, V. You can, I've actually used this to take people's pain away. It's a neurological phenomena that was discovered through linguistics, but actually has a much deeper neurological impact. Okay, I've, I've been, some of the videos we'll release later on. These are from my master class a couple years back. I literally had like three people in my class at the same time, all suffering from tinnitus. And within 20 minutes of, of just compounding the, uh, the autonomizer, I literally talked them out of tinnitus. Uh, there's a video floating around on YouTube where I actually uh, talked a woman out of back pain using the autonomizer formula. You can still find that out there, actually. It's still floating around. Um, so the thing is, is the moment you have them rate it, now they've quantified it. Uh, Michael Pantalon was the author of Instant Influence. Very good book. Highly, highly recommend you pick it up. Um, and then, uh, and then, why didn't you rate it less? Oh, that gets them every time. Now, depending on what they answer, you may have to chunk up or chunk down, you know, to something smaller that they're willing to do. Like, for instance, um, if you get somebody who's coming to you, and again, I'm using I'm using clinical examples, but it doesn't have to be. It could be it could be um, a custody battle or child support payment. You know, or they said, um, you know, someone might say, I don't, you know, I don't want Jesse to spend more than two weekends a month with you. And maybe you want three, or maybe there's a special, a special occasion that you want to take her for that doesn't fall within your, uh, your agreement. And you say, look, I get that, that you, you don't want me to have, you know, her on or him on such and such a date. I, I, I get that. It's, and it's your right. And, and I support your parent, your parental rights, but just so I understand you better. And, and again, um, if it would help me out, if you were to want to let her come over and, 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 and go on that trip, why might you want to do that? Why might that be cool? Right. And wait, she'll come up with something. And you agree. You say, thank you. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, uh, just so I, you know, just, I'm just for my edification, you know, on a scale of zero to 10, how much might you be willing to do that or wanting to do that? And I'll give you a number and I'll excellent. I'm surprised. Why so much? You know, what, what, what how come you feel so strongly about that? And they're going to, they're going to give you a rationalization and in the act of generating the rationale, they are defending their point or viewpoint. And in the process of defending it, the desire to do it gets stronger. Does that make sense? The final close. The final close is, it's one of two things. What's the next step we need to take, if any, to move that forward? And whatever it is, guess what you do? You agree with it? And do it. However big or small the step is, echo it back, agree with it, build on it. Wash, rinse, repeat. Okay. Questions on it. And then it got very quiet. <laughs> uh, John, do you have it? This should be in your killer influence videos. Um, how can you get it? It's in your videos. Too much to process. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to learn how to go from uh, interesting information to unstoppable influence and persuasion? All right. So let me explain to you a little bit about where I'm coming from in terms of what I wanted for this webinar. See, this was my first webinar, and I I am so grateful for all of you that I just I just 
thinking to myself, I know a lot of you because of your, your lifestyle where you, I know Clara like lives in Australia for God's sakes. And a bunch of you are from all over the world. I know Dakesh, I think Dakesh is, aren't you coming? I know somebody else. Never mind. Um, Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, I wanted to, I wanted, I've, I sat back and I thought to myself, all right, how, how can I get all these people the results that they want the way they want it fast? And of course, my answer is always live events coming to, you know, if people ask me all the time, they say, David, what's the best way to learn this? I say, is it videos? Is it, is it your home study courses? I look at them and I say, live, live events, trainings. But that's a problem for a lot of people because traveling out to San Diego, which is where I hold the vast majority of my events, it's not an easy trip for some people. So I sat back and I thought, think to myself, well, okay, how can I, how can I really, really, really thank everybody and help everybody for just supporting me? You guys have been awesome. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I'm one of the most grateful son of a bitches on the planet. I'm not a humble dude. Don't get me wrong. I have an, I have a ego the size of fucking Texas, right? But I am grateful. I, I call it leadership lessons I learned from Elvis. Um, because you never hear Elvis talking bad about a client or a, or a, or a fan or, or whatever. Um, so I thought I sat back and I said, okay, well, if I were going to design a program right for them, that was, you know, that would get them everything that you guys wrote in about and more, how would I do it? What would I do it? And on a scale of zero to 10, how much might I want to do that? <laughs> you know? Um, and so here's what I came up with and uh, stick around while I go through this, because I'm actually going to, uh, explain a lot of what this is. I, I've called this the optimum persuasion training pathway. And I realized that not everyone was going to be able to, to, to come out and, and do live events. So I looked at, you know, what's it, what do I have in my archives? You heard me, you know, I was talking to John, you heard me talking about it's in this program or in that program or that program or this program. And I started thinking to myself, based on the questions I was getting today, you know, what would, if I could put together a series of trainings and deliver it, what would give people the absolute biggest bang for their buck? They'd never need to come see me again unless they really wanted to. Uh, and so this is what I came up with. I'm going to just run through it. And tell me what you think, uh, and, I'll, and I'll explain it as I go. Um, so this is the exact training regimen I would give to somebody who uh, is on the webinar tonight. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me preface this real quick. One of the things that I tell all my live students who come to me is that before you you jump into any program and you can ask the people on in the chat room. This is true. I'll, I'll hand out my offer sheets or, or my product catalog like two days before the end of the training. And I'll say, don't, before you, you jump into anything, talk to me first. Because depending on what you want to do and the outcomes that you've expressed, you may have a different training pathway through my live events or my products. And so, work with me and I will give you the optimum training funnel for you so you can get the results you want in the shortest amount of time possible. Now, obviously I can't do that for 450 people at the same time. So I sat back and I looked at the vast majority of questions I was getting, uh, where they all, I did kind of like my mastermind where I look at all the connecting threads and I create the lesson plan right on the spot. And then I, boom, I present it in that, in that format. And by the way, we're going to be opening up our, uh, our NLP Power Mastermind virtually. We're working out the technology now. But for those of you who want to do virtual work with me in a semi-private mentoring program, it's not that expensive in terms of how like a, lot of, a lot of other people run their programs. We're not ready that yet. Um, so, And we may actually bonus that along with some things I'm going to talk about. So that's kind of the mindset I had when I, when I put this together. So this is what I got. And here's what, it's, here's what I want, want to do for you. Um, so this is the exact training regimen that I would have prescribed somebody uh, if you were at a live event. Um, hold on to this. And the first one I would talk about is uh, Killer Influence. This is a video course, Secrets of uh, Covert Hypnotic Influence. Killer Influence is, how can I describe it? It is the complete manual on social hypnotic engineering. It is an expansion on, this, on the six-stage CPI model we talked about. So it takes you through the entire conversational hypnosis training protocol, the universal persuasion protocol. And then it takes your study, makes you unstoppable with that, gives you all the state control training, all the self-directed transfer training that you would need for vibrational influence, which is an advanced course. 
And then it takes you into the realm of hypnotic operators. It teaches you how to, how to speed read people. It teaches you social hypnosis, social hypnotic operators, proxemic hypnotic operators. Uh, there's a section in there I call dirty rotten tricks, which are advanced persuasion strategies that are very, very, uh, they're a little on the, they're a little gray for lack of a better word. Um, how many videos is that? It's about 17, I think. 17 videos plus a 200 plus page manual. It's huge. Uh, yeah, Elijah has it. Um, and, it, and it, it also goes through into cold reading, cold reading, meta programs. Uh, it, the binder is huge. I mean, it's just, it's just massive amount of information. Uh, it even, and it, and that, the particular version I'm giving you actually has information that I have never taught since then. Um, there's a, there's a segment in there, uh, we call the, uh, magic mirror, which is understanding meta frames at a, and, and in frame control at a whole different level. So that is a great course and it's designed for beginner to take you to beginner to expert in just the shortest amount of time possible. You could spend years on that and uh, it will just, it's just awesome. But I didn't stop there. I also added into this, this process uh, another, another uh, two day training that I did called rapid attraction secrets. Now, a lot of you asked about relationship stuff. In 2005, I was one of the top 10 uh, attraction and seduction experts of the year by, by Art of Approaching and SeductionLayer.com. I did that not because I could go out and, and just you know, have them you know, like on fish on a hook. It was because of my ability to create such deep, lasting, fulfilling, romantic experiences with people that people just did not want – they would just fall in love and they would just want to be with me. Um, pretty much forever. So I had to learn how to, to juggle multiple long-term relationships. Now I've evolved, but the, the, the power and the, and the skills in rapid attraction secrets will teach you everything. A lot of people asked about approaching. Now, the thing about rapid attraction secrets is that it was designed for, for both men and women. Uh, in fact, uh, on an earlier version of rapid attraction secrets, I literally had a, a very, very uh, wonderful woman uh, in her late forties, early fifties, who was a, literally a rocket scientist. She came to the class learned the, the skills, uh, and went out and literally uh, put the whammy on the guy running the front desk who was 10 years younger than her and dated for quite some time until he, found, until he, he revealed his true colors and um, she, found better, she found better opportunities. But when I say it's, it was designed for both genders, I mean that. So this particular course had an all-male audience, but I do have another version that if you, got, if you ladies want that, I will actually – add that to this rapid attraction secrets and you can have both courses and it's a full, it, it goes from completely cold approaches using three magic questions. A lot of you asked about that all the way up to romantic engagement and things like that. So it's really, really good. It's a, it's a full two day training and the people in the class literally went out like those nights and came back with tremendous field reports uh, about their experiences, about how to create a very long, very powerful, very lasting relationships. So, you know, killer influence, we retail that on the site for 1497. Rapid Attraction Secrets, we retail for twelve ninety seven. dollars For those of you who asked about business applications, um, and the reason I'm, I'm doing this is Killer Influence is like the core curriculum with a bunch of other power amplifiers in it. Rapid Attraction Secrets is where we go with the Killer Influence stuff or without it. If we you just did it, uh, just Rapid Attraction Secrets, you'd be awesome. But going into the romantic areas, you know, improving your relationship, coming uh, and how to create, become the most fascinating person in, uh, in a man or a woman's life. And, and linking that to you in such a way that they just want to see you and be with you more and more and more. So if you like Echo Technique, Three Magic Questions, you want to learn about Criterion Values, uh, Body Language Skills, The Seven Stages of Attraction, which we talk about in Renegade Romance, it's all in there. The whole system is right there. For people with business applications, um, the Stealth Selling Secrets model is by far the, one of our highest rated programs utilizing the Killer Influence and CPI systems for the express purpose of uh, selling marketing and business applications. When I talk about selling marketing and business applications, I'm talking about everything from mediation, uh, voir dire, jury selection, uh, negotiation. Uh, a lot of people um, have used this who are in the actually the home improvement field of all places and are going out and just 40, you know, 20, 40 percent bumps in their closing rates and improving sales. So if you can do any kind of sales, any kind of presenting, venture capitalists, uh, you know, pitching to anything, this is uh, probably one of the most 
powerful courses you can have. It was designed as a, an extra breakout for our Killer Influence course. So um, you'll see my good friend James C2 doing what he does best. Now, for those of you who don't know who James is, call him my corporate seduction specialist. Uh, he's a, actually a recruiter for Fortune 500 companies. So he literally, he literally, his job is literally to pick up the phone and seduce a high-level CEO out of one company and into another who has no, has expressed no interest in moving whatsoever. So James is brilliant at what he does. Um, he's fun and uh, tremendous, tremendous value for that. That would be to retail that for uh, 297. Uh, you were asking about clearing up shit. One of the best program that. That is our self mastery supercharger. Uh, we normally retail that between anywhere between four ninety seven and two ninety seven. Um, that's thirteen videos. Thirteen videos, um, and it takes you through the entire identity by design silo, which is how to clean up your shit, how to um, uh, reprogram your past, expunge all the negativity, install the qualities, traits, and characteristics of people you admire. Uh, change the voices in your head so that you they only build you up instead of tearing you down. When I've when over and over again, what we find is that the voices in our head are the are the are the parts that do the most damage, and uh, the the segments in in that particular course just nuke those internal dialogues and create a powerful powerful resource. If you've ever seen our Pillars of Power uh, clip on YouTube, that's actually taken from uh, one of the uh, the Identity by Design courses, where which is where the Self Mastery Supercharger comes from. Time and time again, we get asked about anchoring. Anchoring is one of the most powerful um, processes you can use. NLP likes it a lot. Uh, I have my own thoughts about anchoring. Uh, when people ask about anchoring, this is usually the video we point them at. I don't create anchors so much as I steal them. Uh, human beings have thousands, literally thousands of personal anchors that they're, they're accessing constantly when they communicate. And if you know how to observe a person, um, you can figure out very, very quickly where those anchors are and utilize them to, to literally sig uh, trigger emotional states in them. Okay, uh, I don't spend as much time uh, in the NLP style of, of anchoring, which is used like as resources for eliminating phobias and things like that. I have other things I think work better, um, but anchoring is a powerful, powerful tool, and a lot of people, it's good to know how to do it, um, and so you can actually build on that foundation and work into like spatial anchoring and tonal anchoring, things that you would do in a presentation or in a courtroom or from the stage. Uh, in fact, we have whole courses on, on how to do this stuff from the stage that we'll talk about later on. One of the other more popular videos that we have for people who like to clear shit uh, is energy hypnosis, speed healing. A lot of people were asking about my, uh, my spinning technique and some of the more advanced stuff that we do. Uh, this particular training, I think this is actually the one uh, where I actually use the resistance removal formula to take somebody's pain away. If, I, if it's the same video, uh, not only am I teaching spinning in this one, I'm also uh, utilizing the conversational framework to get rid of her back pain. So the total value, if we were to buy all this on the site, it would cost you about $3,582. Bucks. Um, but for people who are on the call today, uh, we've got a special price. You can get all this stuff. Everything, the uh, the Killer Influence 17 video course, the Rapid Attraction Secrets, sell Selling Secrets, Self Mastery Supercharger, Anchors in Action, uh, Energy Hypnosis and Speed Healing, one-time payment, one-time installment of nine ninety seven. Or if you prefer, I know some people are, you know, sometimes cash is a little, little challenging. Um, we can break that down into three installments of three ninety nine. Uh, Brandon's going to give you a link right now. And uh, for those, for the next, I think it's 50 people who jump on this, I got something really, really cool for you. If you were to actually come to my Killer Influence live training, which is a four-day event, uh, if you have some of these, we'll sub them out with something else, William. Um, to come to my, my, my four-day event is a huge, huge investment. The training alone is $2,663 plus the four days of hotel, plus the, uh, the food, plus the travel. So for anybody who jumps into my ultimate persuasion package today, I like to call it my Mondo Supremo, I want it all package. I am going to give you a free VIP ticket to my Killer Influence Live 2017 four-day covert hypnosis certification boot camp. Absolutely free. You can use it yourself. It's in San Diego, Christopher. It'll be, it'll be August uh, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th here in San Diego. 
Uh, Brandon's going to give you the link. I can only do that for like the first 50 people. There's like 400 and some people in the call. So if it's something you want, jump in. Um, and uh, the link is now live in your area, I guess. Okay. So that's what I got. I hope you like it. Um, do I have, I, uh, it's an interesting question, Gerardo. Yeah, actually I've done, actually, I've actually had to do two exorcisms earlier in my life. Go for it and use these, this is why I gave them to you. Um, I want you to, don't believe anything I told you, go out and use it. Prove this shit to yourself. And when you're ready to come back for more, click the link, you know? Um, so uh, what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll, while you guys are, are handling whatever it is you got to handle, uh, I'll be happy to field some questions if people have those. Um, and we'll go from there. How do you get a very shy person to open up? Great question. Mirror their physiology, echo their words, and genuinely want to connect with them, right? Get them to laugh. Use three magic questions. Um, the expiration for this particular, for people on this call is 24 hours. Um, the, uh, the, the ticket to Killer Influence Live is, uh, is limited to the first 50 people. So as soon as we hit 50, it's going to go away. So I recommend if you know you can do it, do it, right? Find a way to make it happen. I want to see you. I want to work with you. I want to give you the feedback you need. You mentioned getting a client. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, the whole idea is if you've, if you've Julie, if you've targeted their criteria and values effectively, they can't not want to buy. If for some reason um, you're getting a lot of resistance, chances are you haven't you haven't leaned on that criteria or linked it strongly. One of the problems that happens with criteria and values is that um, we don't drill down to the emotional level. Now, if I had to spend all the time drilling down on the hierarchy of criteria, we'd still be on that, and we wouldn't be gotten to any of the other things we talked about, like resistance removal uh, and things like that. But the secret is really. You have to ask the, the question, the, the magic criteria question, Julie, is what's important about X? If they change their mind at the last minute, chances are we miss something in the intake. But remember, if, some, if a client's saying no after you've shown them categorically at an emotional level that um, this can help them, demonstrated it to them in a certain way, and they bail at the last minute, now you're looking at a self-esteem issue. You're looking at a deservingness issue nine times out of 10. More often than not, when we say, I can't afford this, or um, that's not worth it, or what we're really saying is I'm not worth it. You know, and you have to remember, if you've, if you've, if you've genuinely, you know, caringly, and let, my job, my, let, me, let me put this out there. I, one of my mentors was a woman named Lisa Sasevich, and she is just brilliant. I have some of the best women teachers ever. Um, but one of the things that, that Lisa taught me was that when you make an offer, and I'm, I'm, I'm directing this at Julie, but it's at anybody who, who offers a package or any kind of service um, where they have to ask for it. My job when I make an offer, whether it's you know a personal session or like I, I just did now, isn't to uh, make you say yes. My job is just to get you to make a decision one way or the other. Thank you, Alex. Alex got the package. He's in or she's in. I'm, I can't wait to work with you. You're going to be fun. Um, so my job is to help them make a decision. If they say yes, then I can help them. Then if they, if they don't say yes, then what are they going to do instead? Right? I mean, think about it. What are they going to do instead? And by the way, the, uh, in, the word instead is one of those secret ninja words that uh, can completely, completely change a person physiologically as well as, as psychologically. Uh, there are so many words that have so much power in them. It's just how they're used. Uh, but the bottom line is when someone says no, they're not saying no to you, especially, especially if you've taken the time to find out from them what it is that they actually want. 
you've linked. Thank you, John. Welcome aboard, brother. You've linked what they most want to the aspects of your product or service that most fully satisfy their checklist in a way that they recognize it. That's why the checklist is so important. It's one thing to talk about their creation values. It's another thing to keep them fully committed to it that most using their words and the aspects of your product or service that fulfill it. But is why you be careful mostful, that you can actually fulfill what you're promising. Um, well, the criterion most values elicitation and linkage process generates tremendous, tremendous loyalty, almost fanatical actually, uh, in the people that you use it with. And just the act of eliciting it generates rapport. The problem that we have many times is we stop somehow using or linking those criteria and values with it. And uh, and that's and we start lapsing into features and benefits. We start thinking what we think they want to hear rather than what has just come out of their mouth. Literally, creativity at this point can often be the kiss of death in terms of getting people to want to go forward. Sometimes what actually happens, and again, I don't know that this is the case with you, Julie, uh, but a lot of times what happens with some people is they can deliver the service. They can talk about the service, no problem. But when it actually comes time to ask for the sale, to ask for the commitment, um, we, we become somebody else. We get nervous. Uh, and that, that momentary hesitation, that incongruity creates that, that, that little snag in the smooth flow of their decision-making process. And the other thing that we have to look at when we're talking about offering, we're going to cover this. Um, I don't see last names, so this might be, I don't know if this is my Julie from New York that's coming to see me in April or not. Uh, when we teach hypnotic attraction secret or hypnotic presentation skills, uh, one of the things we make a distinction in is the difference between pressure and tension. What you see when you go to a lot of pitch fests is what we call tension. They are, buy, are, are buying or pressure, actually. They're generating a tremendous amount of buy my product, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. And people will respond to that, obviously, because they've been doing it for, for years. But what you want to learn to generate in your clients is buying tension. There, you build up a tremendous, tremendous desire for the product that at some point they just can't not do it. And 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 what you will feel as as that is build product, thing up, you'll see that hesitation in them. Just let it build, um, because you can't help them until they make a decision. And that's the secret. Your job isn't to be concerned whether they say yes or whether they say no. Your job is simply to guide them to a decision. If that decision is yes, great, you can help them. If that decision is no, then you have to ask them another question. But what are you going to do instead? Right? But that all presupposes you've categorically demonstrated that you can fulfill it. Bye, Sridhar. Thank you for coming. Actually, Chris, uh, your um, about Spanish is yes, you're right. The the linguistics of it uh, can be a little weird in some in some language patterns, unless some language uh, poetry. If you want to sound like a poet, you can use some of the adverb adjective free subs, and they'll sound like very weird. Pre poetry is one of the most hypnotic uh, phenomena we linguistically that we generate. Yes, no, so we're going to have lots of notes. Um, and hopefully a replay at some point. Um, but yeah, some of the language patterns, some of the language patterns um, need to be tweaked a little bit depending on what your language is. And I'll teach you in Killer Influence. I'll teach you, I'll teach you which ones. I'll teach you those are because there's not that many. How do you set up a personal? Uh, when you want to set up a personal, it's in yeah, it's in San, San Diego, 2017. I will send you an email with all the locations, dates, uh, accommodations, things like that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for coming out. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you're enjoying the the, the webinar. Uh, if people are going to hang around a little while um, while you're you know waiting in line to do whatever it is you're doing, um, we'll do some. If people want to do some clearing stuff, I'll run you through a little induction after I answer questions. Yes, I need more coffee. <laughs> Me too. Um, let's see where are we at. Um, so yeah, criterion values. Echo technique, keep them linked to what they say they want. 
Uh, and the, the secret to this, this is what Kenrick taught me, was the longer you keep them linked using their words uh, to their criteria and value, the more they tend to do business with you out of default. Um, I, did a, I did a consult with a, a, a group of realtors out in um, Florida. And uh, I actually did the, uh, the criteria and values presentation process. And I don't do real estate, but I understand human beings. And they were floored by how rapidly they just wanted to buy. And that's the secret. I did this out the first time. Actually, I, one of the toughest audiences I ever had was actually in Israel. Um, and I was teaching the echo technique. And uh, I had this one gentleman in the audience. I was, and they brought me out there to teach three different groups of people. They wanted me to teach the, the, the VPs of the company. They wanted me to teach the R&D people. And they wanted me to teach the customer service people. And the, the R&D people were the funniest because their idea of customer service was read the manual, right? Um, and they would all come in and this was their pose. So I'm, I'm, teaching the, uh, I'm teaching the echo technique. And one guy looks at me. He's like incensed. He's irate. He goes, I don't believe it. I go, you don't believe it? He goes, no, I don't believe it. I said, you, you don't believe it? He goes, no. I said, what, what is it you don't believe? I don't believe that would work. You don't believe that would work. And for the next five minutes, everything that came out of his mouth, I echoed it right back. And he never caught it. And everyone around him caught it. And after about five or six minutes of letting him hoist himself on his own petard, I looked at him and I said, sir, do you realize that all I've been doing for the last five or six minutes is, is giving your own words back to you? Now, I don't know if you've ever seen like the, the Yosemite Sam cartoons uh, where like he has too much hot sauce. And you just see the, the red till it like the red completely fills him up and steam comes out of his ears. That was this guy. And he gets this, this dis depressed, disheartened look on his face. He looks at me and he goes, and he looks at his friends like, is that really true? Did, I, did that just happen? He goes, he goes, are we really so stupid? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, no, no, you're not stupid. You're selfish. Every neurology on the planet is selfish. And you can always count on that. Every neurology on the planet is projecting its internal world onto the outer world, searching desperately for a match to that checklist. And the moment the moment you see the fit, the moment you, you record, you, you perceive that there's a match, you cling to it and you hold on to it because it feels right. It feels natural. And it's natural to go along with that. We don't want to give that up. We all go through our lives desperate for that kind of connection, that kind of belongingness. It's a fundamental feeling that drives our behavior. It's a feeling we want more of. Does that make sense? Right? Um, as long as people, as far as negotiating peace in the Middle East, as long as people are actually willing to negotiate, are willing to, 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 to move on certain things. Yeah, I think so. I think, I don't know that I would be the one to do it, you know, but, you know, human beings have things they want. My job is to show you how to get it. What is the vibrational influence course and how does it expound on the skills learned in killer influence? Killer, the driver behind CPI and killer influence is physiological state control, the ability to go into any psycho-emotional state on demand, link that state or link your physiology to another human beings and transmit it proprioceptively into them and cause their neurology, the feelings in their body and their perceptual filters to change. That's fundamental to CPI and killer influence. Vibrational influence begins to, to teach you how to leverage that connection in much more powerful and expanded ways. Everything from remote viewing to remote influence. Um, a lot of the, if you've ever he, saw, seen any of uh, Kenrick's dark side stuff where he's teaching you all these different constructs that you can use to exert psychic influence. If for, I don't like to use that word. Um, it's all pro, in my world, it's all proprioceptive and mirror neuron uh, facilitated. Yeah. Um, yeah, very much energetic. I'm, I'm a Qigong master. I have a ninth degree black belt in the martial arts. I do all that stuff. But in my world, that stuff becomes less reliable if you don't have state control and self-directed trance work down. And because it's such a fundamental physiological driver to the influence that I teach, 
the better you get at it at a mundane real world street level that you can do it consistently and automatically whenever the faster and more powerful you'll be when you start to exert uh, you start to exert influence on uh, on, a, on a vibrational energetic level if you've heard of me talk about things like sphere of influence or tom Vizzini's uh sphere of uh, or smurfing these are all examples of vibrational influence they're extensions of developing a neurology that can extend I suspect you don't have full control over yourself. I knew Seth was on who was going to say something. Um, the idea is that once we can influence a person, once we can control our own state, we can leverage that influence and generate a reflection of it in somebody else. But because the person having it perceives it as being internally generated, they act on it as if it's their own. And, uh, and so it, it gives tremendous amplitude and push to our persuasion techniques and behaviors. It, it redirects the perceptual filters. It redirects the direction the current of the body and mind is moving. So they're far more likely and predisposed to parsing our information um, the way that we've, we want them to go without us having to you know, micromanage them. Well, absolutely. If you're lucky, if you can do that, absolutely awesome. Uh, are you talking about empathy? It, I used to call it empathic, empathic influence, but it's not just the ability to, to send it. It's about the ability to perceive it and read it. Uh, and we actually have exercises where we teach you how to send emotions back and forth and they get progressively more challenging. We had one, we had one, uh, we had one training where people were literally sending movies back and forth to each other. It was funny. If you're not happy with stealth selling secrets, I'll give you your money back. Right. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I, I stand behind everything I do. Um, always have. Right. Which has caused people to take advantage of me in the past. But you know what? That's just the cost of doing business. Um, so, yeah. What other questions do we have? What is the best book on the proprioceptive system that you know? That's a good question. I actually have a, one book on proprioception I haven't finished reading yet. It says that it actually implies that the neurology has a um, its own internal nervous system. It actually has a, a kind of a brain of its own. Uh, but I'd say you know, I think G Ray had it when he says HeartMath.org is probably the um, the best the best source for for that kind of stuff right now. I like a lot of Scott Sonnen's work on. Um, uh, he has one on peak performance where he talks about a lot of the proprioception things. How do we control our state? Dikesh, there's two ways you control your state. One is through your willpower, which is uh, usually the least effective way. Uh, and then there's through your physiology and your breathing pattern, which is usually the most um, bulletproof way. Because regardless of what's going on around you, unless you're physically tied into a specific posture, the moment you change your posture and your breathing pattern, uh, all of your perceptual filters and emotional states uh, change. The science behind that goes back to, and G Ray's right there again. He's transcribed most of my YouTube videos. So if you see a transcript floating around on YouTube, uh, thank G Ray. He's the one who's actually taking the time to write all that stuff down. Um, the, the, the TED Talk Power Poses by Amy Cuddy is uh, probably the best research on how to actually uh, change your state using physiology. We've gone way beyond what, what the science is showing us, but. Um, but in terms of things that you can test and prove and, and show the, the, the stats on, um, the amygdala controls your fear responses. It it's, a, it's, a, it's connected to your, your limbic system. And it can be, it can be in fact, Sistema actually uh, teaches you how to retrain the amygdala uh, and reprogram your fear responses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's any, any deeply emotional response. The virtual mastermind. Um, the virtual mastermind is an extension of my live mastermind. Um, in 2010, uh, when I started doing meetups again back out here, I uh, I got people who came up to me after each after each meetup, and they would say, "How can I learn more? How can can I, can I get certified by you?" And I would look at them and I'd say, "No." In fact, I refused to certify people for years. Years, in fact, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't until James C. Two, who you see in Stealth Selling Secrets, pulled me aside and said, "David, you got to start certifying people 
because everybody's coming to you. They're getting trained and they're going to get certification from other people. And then these people are claiming that they trained them. Um, and there's a, there's a long sort of story behind that. But the mastermind was my way of saying, okay, who wants to get good at this without getting certified? And uh, it's a pretty unique concept in that, and I'm, I'm just doing this for the benefit of people who don't know what the mastermind is. Uh, the mastermind is a private group mentoring program. I get together with uh, a handful of people on the third Saturday of every month. And I literally, I literally go around the room and I say, what do you want to learn today? Dikesh Stewart, what do you want to learn today? Christopher, what do you want to learn today? Janice, what do you learn today? And I write them all up on the wall. I look at the connecting threads and I generate that lesson plan right on the spot. Thank you for coming out. Um, and what we do is for the next four hours, I drill you on those specific skills until you can do them in your sleep. There's no certification. It's all the certifications of nonstop hands-on drilling and skilling. And uh, you go out into the world when you're done and you apply your skills. You come back the next month if you want to. And I ask the same thing. Dikesh, what do you want to learn? Janice, what do you learn? Christopher, what do you want to learn? Stuart, what do you want to learn? G. Ray, what do you want to learn? And I, we wash, rinse, repeat every month. So there's a lot of overlap. Good night, William. Um, there's a lot of overlap from one month to the next, but it's all designed to give you the exact skills you need to go get the result you want that day. Uh, we've been doing that nonstop since 2010. It's now 2017. Uh, it hasn't stopped. I'll be there, Janice, I'll be there in, uh, in uh, June, uh, June 21st through the 25th in Peterborough. So if you're around, uh, stop by. Um, we've, and we've been at, people have been after me for, they're, they're listed on the NLP Power website. What we are going to do, uh, I, was, I was talking with Brandon about this today, that um, we have some final tweaks that we need to do. But what we're going to do for people who want to get extra hands-on training, uh, we're going to open up a virtual mastermind. It will probably be held in conjunction uh, with my Saturday live group. So everybody's together. Um, and we'll, we'll set the, it, it's not like a, it's, 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 it's like a subscription. So you can, you can come in for a month or a year or two years and it's just renewed monthly. You can quit anytime. I don't, I don't charge this, ma like a lot of people do these like $20,000 masterminds. I'm not, I'm not doing that for this group. I may do it for other things, but, but not for this one. This one's too close to my heart. So uh, we, yes, we did change the dates for Peterborough. We changed that like three weeks ago. Um, so for people who want to get in on that, use it as a supplement and troubleshoot certain things that they're getting in their courses or in their personal life, then, uh, you know, that will open that up. Let's clear up not having big money for big learning. <laughs> Next stop, New York City. Okay. Could outside USA join? Yes. The, the problem that we're having, Janice, and, and again, this goes back to my commitment. See, my, see, I'm a martial artist. I've been a martial artist since like for 15 years. And the one thing I've always been terrified about is putting out a student who sucks because it's my name on their certificate uh, uh, who, or who can't perform. So I'm, I'm adamant. I am adamant about hands-on. I am adamant about getting on the floor and doing the drills and getting the skills. Uh, and so one of the reasons I've held off on doing a virtual mastermind for so long is I have no way to guarantee you get the hands-on, which you need. I demand it. If you come to my, my live events, um, we do three times more hands-on than any other trainer in the industry. And you start fixing problems from day one. I mean, I, I literally, I literally throw you in the soup. Uh, until you can do this shit backwards, forwards, sideways. Because A, I don't want you to fail. B, I don't want you to suck because it's my name on your certificate. So it's entirely ego driven. So I love, and, and the other thing, of course, Janice, is the time frame. You know, is, is, you know, can we do the time zones? So what we do for people who are in the live mastermind is we video record every single uh, training since 2010. It's archived on the NLP Power website. In fact, we're backlogged with getting stuff uploaded. We're constantly uploading new stuff. So anybody who's in the mastermind gets unlimited access to the entire seven years of video. It's all there. You can, if you don't mind waiting through the dead spots, um, you can watch seven years 
of, of people training and learning and discussing everything from, from marketing to hypnotherapy to neurolinguistics to energetics um, and all points in between. Pickup, seduction, it's all there. Um, if you wanted to learn it and it was in my skill set, we taught it. And because of people asking me all these different things and I have to put it all together, I got really good at finding out how things fit, how things work synergistically. So I, I gain a tremendous amount out of it. So I do I, a lot of the reason I keep it so low is to keep people in, to keep a, a steady, a steady stream of people coming in so I can play and learn how to do, do things better. So that's why I do what I do. Um, so if you can get around the, uh, the need to have practice partners, if you can, if you can bring somebody that, that will play with you during the virtual sessions, and you're willing to access, you know, sometimes you might have to get up at two o'clock in the morning to actually take part in a live event, which isn't cool uh, for some people. Some people don't mind it. Um, or if you mind just watching the videos as they become available, um, you'll be able to participate. Those are the things that we're working. Those are the things that we're working on right now. We'll, we'll iron out those bugs. But a lot of people have actually joined the, the mastermind virtually. And I send out an email uh, about a week or so before every session asking the people virtually what it is they want to learn. And they're the first things I read uh, when I do the, when I do the opening to the mastermind so that their questions get answered. And as soon as we post them, you can get, uh, you can get your questions answered and get the drills you need to, to get good at that. So I hope that answers the, the UK questions and stuff like that. Uh, Jorge, I just started your stealth hypnosis is great. Once I finish, I will definitely continue. Cool. Thank you, Jorge. Is it Jorge or George? What do you prefer? Give me a phonetic spelling. Uh, what's your take on Darren Brown? Uh, like Darren Brown, don't trust him. Um, and what I mean by that is you have to understand that Darren is really, really good um, at, at the skills he has. But, big but, he's an entertainer. He's design, his job is to deceive you. And so while a lot of his, his, his stuff is legitimate NLP or hypnosis, you never know what's a shill and what's not. We all know reality television isn't real, okay? Um, so I get a lot of questions about Darren. I, I love watching his stuff. Uh, he, a lot of his stuff is based on, prof on valid psychological hypnotic principles, but you don't know what you're getting when you, when you, when you watch his videos. And so that's my, that's my take on it. I love his stuff. Don't trust it. Do I recommend all of Swing Cat's material? As much as you can tolerate, yes. Especially his early stuff. Uh, his early stuff was, was much more um, field-driven. I, I, haven't, I haven't talked to, to Swing Cat in probably six or seven years. So I don't know, that some, beyond like sexual vibing, or uh, the, I don't really know what he's doing. I haven't followed him that much. But you got to remember, so much of what, what Swing Cat derived translates directly into any form of social influence, any form of negotiation, mediation, uh, frame control. In fact, Oren Claff's book, Pitch Anything, I think, is a direct steal from Swing Cat's early work, even the terminologies. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Janice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, so for those of you who are still hanging around, how many people want to clear some shit? All right. All right. So here's uh, now I got to warn you. All right. Um, I can't see you. So that means that my timing is going to be unique to me. If as I guide you through these processes, I'm going a little too fast. That's OK. Take your time. Your unconscious will catch up. Finish your processing and just move forward at your own natural pace. If for some mysterious reason. We should uh, lose connectivity, which I don't think we will, because this has been a rock solid connection the whole uh, the whole time. Uh, I want you to close your eyes for me. If we should lose connection, you will finish whatever process you're in. You'll come out of trance long enough for us to reestablish connection, and you'll go back into trance, so we can continue with the next part of our process. So let's go ahead. Close your eyes for me. Take a deep breath in. Ah, take it, uh, let that breath out with a sigh. Deeper and deeper with every breath you take and every beat of your heart. All I want you to do, my friends, is just relax. Let go. Listen to the sound of my voice. Now, any sounds you hear, 
other than the sounds of my voice or simply the sounds of your environment or mine. They're not going to disturb you or distract you in any way. In fact, all they're going to do is signal you, remind you, reinforce the fact that you are completely safe. And no matter how far inside you travel, no matter how deep inside your mind, body, and soul you go, you'll always be able to hear my words, follow my instructions, and obey my commands. Because you realize that everything I say and everything I do is for you. To give you the life you want, the way you want it, by your standards and your definitions. Now in a moment, not yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to focus all of your attention on the lids of your eyes. I'd like you to begin to relax those tiny muscles in your eyelids. I'd like you to relax them more and more and more until they're so relaxed, so fully, completely relaxed that you couldn't actually open them without tensing them back up again. And when you know you've got them that relaxed, go ahead and give them a little test just to be sure. And then when you're done, stop testing that level of relaxation flow top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes deeper and deeper with every breath you take and every beat of your heart just let go now in a moment not yet but in just a moment i'm going to ask you to begin to relax your mind as deeply as we've relaxed your body we're going to do that in a very special way in a moment not yet but in just a moment I'm going to begin to ask you to imagine the alphabet backwards, starting with the letter Z. With each and every breath you take and each and every beat of your heart, all I want you to do is relax those letters completely out of your mind. Allow them, if you will, to become smaller and darker and harder to see. Turn the volume all the way down. Down, down, deeper and deeper, down, down, down. Now, I can't do this for you. Only you can allow this to happen. And when you know they're done, you're as completely relaxed in mind as you are in body, just remain quiet for a while and I'll tell you where we're going next. Smaller and darker and harder to see. Turn the volume down, 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 down. Now in a moment, not yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to, ask, I'm going to give you a choice of something. I want you in a moment to either sort back through your memories or if you prefer, just go deeply into your imagination to a time and a place where you felt the most safe, the most protected, where all your needs were being satisfied in exactly the way that was appropriate to your checklist. Now, for some of you, you may need to go back into your imagination. For others, there may be a place in your childhood, in your earlier life, that fits that bill precisely. However you do it, in whatever way that's most right and natural for you is okay. Now, many people's safe places take on various flavors depending on where they grow up and how. Some people's safe places are places where they grow up. Other people's safe places, places in nature, sandy beaches, mountaintops, caves, forest glens, meadows. Others are more spiritual or religious in nature a temple, a church, a synagogue. Some are more metaphysical, a sacred space surrounded by spirit guides or guardian angels or animal totems or whatever manner of beings populate your worldview of how the universe works. Some are more mundane. Some are more aggressive. I had one young lady out in the United Kingdom. Her idea of a safe place was a nuclear fallout shelter five miles below the surface of the earth, surrounded in lead and concrete. <laughs> and there was only enough room in that sucker for her. What I'm really trying to say is that no matter what flavor or what genre or what time period your safe place takes, 
It's perfectly okay. It's right. It's natural. It's awesome just for you. But the one thing that all safe places have in common is that when you're in that safe place, when you see what you see and you hear what you hear and you feel what you feel, you taste and smell what you taste and you smell, there's a feeling that you get, a feeling that lets you know you're completely safe. Now, many people often notice as that energy runs through those areas, a sense of expansion, a sense of release, as if something that was locked inside of being held down, restricted in some ways, being released, expanded. And many people often discover a consciousness expanding, floating up out of their body and floating up into that wonderful, safe energy, like a drop of water merging back into the ocean from which it came. They feel a sense of reunion, of reconnection, of re-empowerment, of tapping into something that is uniquely them and yet infinitely more powerful and supportive of all that you are. And while people, as they merge deeper and deeper into this place, feel a sense of empowerment, of expansion, they still retain that spark of individuality that is uniquely theirs while having access to all of that ability. And many people often discover that in this place, anything they can imagine and anything they can intend and anything they can act out with their physical bodies must, must, must become real and true and made manifest in the external world. Because it's the external world and all its variables that is the hardest to predict. But all the experts agree, from the most learned and educated of quantum physicists of our modern age, to the wisest, most powerful ancient mystic masters, even though they evolved and developed in different time periods and different cultures, use different words. They are all saying the same thing. They all agree on the same thing. And that it's your inner world, that inner universe that controls and manages and manifests the external one. And so while it's not always possible to anticipate, to prepare for every variable in the outside world, inside you're in complete control. You are the god or goddess of your neurology, the queen of your universe, the king of your universe. And you have absolutely every right, every privilege and authority, the autonomy to make change that you desire for any reason that you desire and have those changes reflected outward in the external world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you move into this place deeper and deeper and deeper, there's some feelings that you've been having, some feelings that you would like to change. Now, they may be simple. They may be more complex. Now, because I'm speaking to all of you remotely, virtually, I'll do my best to modify what I do so that you can easily follow along. What I would like you to do is just take however long you need to process and do these things at your own rate. I want you to notice as you scan your body that there's a place in your body where the feelings you want to change start, where they grow, where they manifest from. In a moment, in just a moment, I'd like you to take your hands. I'd like you to point to where you feel that. I'd like you to notice that there's a color connected to that feeling. Notice those colors first impression. And once you have those colors, I want you to take your fingers and outline the shape of those colors in your body. Notice what shape it takes and describe it to yourself. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to notice something else. Notice if that colored shape has any weight or temperature or texture. Notate that to yourself. And what I'd like you to do next is really kind of cool. I'd like you to take your safe energy, breathe it through that area, and notice what happens. Now, what usually happens for most people 
You can continue to breathe as I continue to talk. That won't disturb you or distract you. One of two things happens right away. That area starts to dissolve, starts to melt like an ice cube. And sometimes it goes away completely. And sometimes it dissolves to a certain point and stops. Now, if yours goes away completely, just keep breathing until it stops going away or it's completely gone. When you know it's gone, try to bring it back and notice what happens instead. If it's completely gone, scan your body for something else and repeat the process. And just keep doing that until they're all gone. For those of you who begin breathing their energy through an area and it dissolves to a certain point, it seems to stop. Here's what you do next. I want you to notice the color connected to that feeling. Notice the shape and the texture, the temperature. And then I want you to use your mind eye. I want you to travel into the center of it. I want you to pass through the center of it, like a thread passing through the eye of a needle like a wormhole through time and space, back to the very first seen situation or event that has everything to do with that experience. When you get there, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Now, some of you will go back there right away. Some of you will take a few seconds. Regardless, as I ask these questions, just go with your first impressions. They're always right. This if you're inside or outside, are you alone or are you with people? Is it daytime or nighttime? And then what I want you to do is I want you to look at your hands in that scene. Are they big boy hands or big girl hands, little boy or little girl hands, or somewhere in between? And then look at your feet. Are they big people feet or little people feet? Look around you. Take an inventory, a report, a survey, if you will, of what's happening. And what I specifically want you to do is I want you to move forward through those events until the feeling that you want to change first appears. And when you find it, I want you to just stop and say, I feel it to yourself. And then looking back on that scene as the modern you, that version of you here in your room, February 6, 2017, I want you to look back on that younger version of yourself with all of your knowledge and all of your wisdom, all of your life experience and all of the power that you didn't know you had. Because in this process, you are all powerful and everything, everything, everything is allowed. As you look back on that scene, if you could go back and change it all, what would you like to see happen instead? What would make you the happiest little camper on the planet right now? Now, you don't have to tell me, but I want you to tell yourself. Speak it out loud if you must. Exactly what you want to have happen to that younger, younger version of yourself instead. Now, when you're ready, only when you're ready, I want you to step back through the wormhole of time and space, back to before that whole se sequence of events ever happened. I want you to take that youngest version of yourself in your arms. Look him or her in the eye. Give him the biggest, most transformational, awe-inspiring, everything is going to be oh, hey, okay, I love you hug ever. Breathe your safe energy through them and notice what happens. And as you do that, 
Take them out of that memory before it ever had a chance to happen. Bring them up into your safe place. And notice what happens. Now, many people notice that they feel happier. They feel more relaxed. They feel free. Look them in the eyes and tell them, hey, buddy, I'm you from the future. And where I come from, the technology exists to come back from the future to change the past. And that's exactly why I'm here. To let you know that everything you would have endured, everything you would have suffered, everything you would have had to go through is done. It's over. It's gone. And it's never, ever coming back. Breathe your safe energy through them once again. And if you imagine, I want you to, I call this your Steven Spielberg moment, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to look that younger version of yourself in, your, in the eyes and ask them, what would make them the happiest little camper on the planet right now? Everything's allowed. I had one young lady came to me for weight loss, binge eating. All she wanted was ice cream and hugs. So we gave her a special kind of ice cream. She could eat as much as she wanted for as long as she wanted, never get fat, never get sick, never lose a tooth, never gain a pound. And all the hugs she could ever want or need. I had one guy. He was a little earthy. All he wanted was consecutive dates with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders for the rest of his natural life. What I'm really trying to say is that everything's allowed. Whatever will make that youngest version of the happiest little camper on the planet, I want you to create an alternate reality movie. A reality where she or he gets every single thing they most want. I want you to go as far back into the past as you need to, as far into the future as you want to. And I want you to write, script, direct, cast and produce every minute of every scene of that alternate reality life. I want you to make it as big as a drive-in movie theater screen, crystal clear like an IMAX. High def, three-dimensional. Turn up the sounds, the smells, the tastes, the feelings. And when it's perfect, perfect for you in every way, I want you to watch it with them. Not once, not twice, but over and over and over again, hundreds and thousands of times at the speed of thought. With each repetition, I want you to make that movie 10 times more real, 10 times more powerful, 100 times more thrilling, fulfilling, and satisfying than any life, any experience she's ever had or he's had until it's overwriting and replacing every experience they've ever had. And as you continue to watch that movie repeating over and over and over again, step into it. Notice where in your body the feelings connected to that amazing new reality start, where they grow and where they spread from. And notice with each repetition, those feelings begin to grow. They begin to spread. They begin to double in size and strength, force and magnitude. Notice the color connected to those amazing feelings, how they expand to fill your body until it's so strong. It's so powerful. Your body can no longer contain all that infinite expanding energy. It begins to stream out of your body, forming an infinite, expanding, unlimited, multicolored frame or just a single colored frame around that new alternate reality movie that you've created. And when you're finally ready to claim it for yourself once and for all, I want you to reach out with both of your hands, grab that frame and the new reality inside of it, lift it up over your head, expand it to fill the universe. And when you're ready, pull it down through your entire being, head to toe, mind, body, and soul. And notice what happens, the colored shape that was in your body. And just keep passing that energy through your entire being until it's completely gone. And all that's left is every fiber of your being vibrating in perfect harmony with this new frame, this new alternate reality, this new vibration. Now, many people notice when they do this, they start to get hot all over. They start to twitch. They start to sweat. Interesting things start to happen as the neurology starts to reset itself. Just let it. 
That's how it's supposed to be. That's what your neurology does when it's reprocessing. I call it the emotional detox. <clears throat> now what I'd like you to do, take all the time you need. There's a lot more that we could do today. And I look forward to helping you with those things in the future. But we'll do one or two more steps just to be thorough. So take all the time you need to pass that frame over and over again, getting stronger and stronger with each pass. Breathe those colors and those feelings through your entire body. Let it fill you up like water fills up a bottle, like fluid fills up a test tube. Anchor them in so fully and completely they're impossible to turn off. And when you know you've got that, try to turn them off. Notice what happens instead. That's right. Now, if you could imagine your other than conscious mind, the part of you that records and catalogs and stores all of your past experiences, if you could imagine your other than conscious mind scanning and surveying every moment of every day of your life from the time you were conceived up to now, sorting out and discovering every single situation, circumstance, or event that was related to, similar to, or caused by the event you just cleared, that you've just changed. If you could imagine your unconscious mind sorting through all of those, finding each and every one of those younger versions of yourself. I'm curious, how many would your unconscious mind find? First impression. Now, for some of you, it may be not. For some of you, it may be a thousand or 10,000. It doesn't matter. Because once you know what that number is, if you could imagine, I want you to notice how the feelings in your body begin to shift and change as your other than conscious mind at the speed of thought begins the process of sorting through all of your memories, finding every single one of those younger versions of yourself that endured anything related to what we just cleared, either caused by, similar to, tangential to, whatever and rescues each and every one of those younger versions of yourself from that event, that memory, that experience, before it ever had a chance to happen. Brings them all up into your safe place. Notice that process taking place when they're all there. Normally, I would say nod your head to let me know, but I want you to take all the time you need at your own pace, realizing your unconscious mind is very capable of following at my speed or yours or both. Your unconscious has it. So just enjoy the show, enjoy the ride. Notice how the things in your body shift and change as these processes continue. Once all of those versions of yourself are up in your safe place, I want you to breathe your safe energy through them and notice what happens. Now, some people, some people, they're, they're, those versions dissolve. Some people just feel really happy. Some people feel lighter. Whatever your response is, it's perfectly right for you. You all do these things your way perfectly. Now, if you could imagine for a moment, all of the bad feelings, memories, negative life lessons that were installed in you, in those younger versions of yourself, if you could imagine them being professionally, perfectly, pleasurably removed, extracted, deleted, purified, purged, expunged from all of them forever, placed in a pile, if you would, way, way, way off in the distance. I'm curious about something. How big would that pile have to be to hold it all? And I want you to notice how the feelings in your body begin to shift and change as your other than conscious mind, aided by my special forces team, I call the karma police. They come in and they begin the process of removing all of that stuff, extracting it out of every version of yourself that ever endured anything related to that first experience, taking it all out of the 
right or wrong, real or imagined, your fault or somebody else's, doesn't matter. Placing it in that pile, way, way off in the distance. Notice the pile growing. And as soon as that pile is complete, now some people's piles are the size of two or three meters. Others are the size of the moon. Some are the size of the Grand Canyon or a small 747, doesn't matter. Notice the process taking place. And as soon as it's all in that pile, something wonderful begins to happen. Although it might not seem so at first. Standing next to that pile, almost like a policeman's lineup, are all the SOBs that created that crap and forced it on you in the first place. Living or dead, real or imagined, right or wrong, like a police lineup, they're all there. And on some unspoken command, my special forces team, aided by your other than conscious mind, the, they dig through that pile. They sort through it and they find every piece of stuff, every piece of karma, for lack of a better word. They begin delivering it back to the people who caused it in the place, first place, in the most karmically appropriate way possible. Now, I don't want you to measure this, manage this, or make it happen faster. Just bear witness to the process taking place. Notice how the feelings in your body shift and change as the karma police and your other than conscious mind deliver all that crap back to the people who installed it in you for any reason in the first place. Feel justice being served, karma being meted out, all wrongs righted for all the right reasons. It doesn't matter. And you're allowed to enjoy it. You're allowed to feel the validation and the vindication of the universe as cosmic justice is delivered on your behalf. Take all the time you need. When it's all done, look back at those younger versions of yourself and notice how they feel now. And I want you to bring them all in for a big group hug. Breathe your safe energy through them and feel them all blending, merging, combining together. Becoming one United States of you. Even if you're not American. Feel that combining, that integration, that harmonization at every level. When they're all together, we have one final phase well, not really one, a couple more, but we're almost done. I want you to create a brand new alternate reality movie where every one of those versions of yourself gets exactly the life they want, the way they want it, in the way that makes them the happiest, most fulfilled and satisfied, successful person on the planet. Best version of self themselves they can be. I want you to go as far back into your past as you need to, as far into your future as you want to. Write, script, direct every moment of every scene. Cast it, direct it, produce it. When it's perfect in every way, watch it. Live it. Not once, not twice, but over and over and over again. Hundreds and thousands of times at the speed of thought. With each repetition, it gets 10 times stronger. 10 times more powerful. A thousand times more real. Until it's more real than any experience they've ever had. Until it overwrites and replaces experience they've ever had until it's the only way you can remember it. And then it just keeps getting stronger. I want you to notice that there's a set of feelings in your body related to that new reality and a set of colors connected to those feelings. And I want you to put a brilliant colored frame around that alternate reality movie. I want you to reach out with both your hands, grab that frame and the movie inside of it, lift it up over your head. And I want you to simultaneously pass that frame through your entire being, head to toe, mind, body, and soul over and over again and breathe those colors through your entire being. Anchor them into every neuron and every cell and every molecule and every atom and the spaces between the atoms and just keep passing that energy, breathing that energy through every level of your being, mind, body, and soul until it's impossible to turn off, impossible to go back to the old way of being. And when you know it's done, try to turn it off. Try to go back to the old way of being. And notice what happens instead. Now 
Again, take all the time you need. In a moment, not yet, but in just a moment, only at the rate and speed that you're completely finished with that process. Your mind, your body, your spirit will begin descending, bringing all of this transformation vibration with you into the body, transformed from the inside out for all the right reasons, bringing all of these new identities and experiences with you. Number one, feel yourself returning to this place we call reality, bringing with you a new reality, my friend. A reality where you've learned and experienced something powerful, something awesome, something that only becomes stronger, more fulfilling, thrilling, and satisfying for as long as your heart continues to beat and your lungs continue to breathe. Number two, all of my suggestions from me to you, from you to your own other than conscious mind are now 10 times more powerful, 10 times more permanent, a thousand times more thrilling, fulfilling, and satisfying than ever before. Embraced, held, perceived, believed, achieved, and manifested by the part of your neurology, mind, body, and soul that most wants, desires, can implement, facilitate, and express these changes in all the ways that give you the life you want, the way you want it by your standards and your definitions. Number three, always at least three ways to overcome any situation, obstacle, or circumstance that you may face. Always solutions to any problem you need to solve in your other than conscious mind will now easily, effortlessly, and automatically generate those solutions and implement them in the quickest, easiest, most effective way for the good of yourself and all concerned. Number four, because it's all for you. You've made the journey. You've followed the instructions. You've obeyed the commands. You've done the drills, done the skills, tested the results. You've earned the rewards and the right to keep them. It's your reality. It's your truth. It's your life. And you live it to the fullest starting now. On the next count, you can emerge from this process only at the rate and speed that you know you've got it. Only at the speed that every level of your neurology, psychology, biology, mind, body, and soul understands, recognizes, realizes, perceives, believes, and achieves that you've got it. Embraced by that part of your mind, body, and soul that most wants and desires can manifest these changes in the quickest, easiest, most effective way for the good of yourself and all concerned. Head clear, mind clear, thinking and acting with calm self-assurance. Feeling good all over. Glad to be alive. Ready to thrive. Number five. Take your time. Come on back. Notice how good you feel. Thank you, Vincent. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Don. You're awesome. Steven, you rock. All right. You're welcome, Dustin. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> G Ray's still processing. Love you too, Jules. You're welcome, Dickash. Uh, I'll see what my webmaster says. He's my he, he runs my life. When is the San Diego date? August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, John. If you, if you if you got a package, you'll be getting an email that confirms everything you'll need to know. Well, I'm glad I could give you ecstasy, Nora. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. You're welcome, John. Thank you, David. Liev, did I pronounce that right, Liev? Well, thank you, Brad. You tell Clara I love her. 
Oh, how do, how do I pronounce that? Can you write it phonetically, Liev? Or Liev? Live? Liev? Leaf. Oh, okay. Leaf, like in tree. Thank you, David. See you in Peterborough. Awesome art. I look forward to that. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, I know. Seth is a charter member. He's got everything we've ever put out and most of the things we've never put out. So if you've ever been in air trainings, you will eventually meet Seth. He's probably one of the first people in line to become a certified trainer. So he's got really good skills and good taste in trainers, apparently. No. Christopher, thank you for coming out. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Glad you stayed. Chris, the mighty Les Guadro. How you doing, amigo? I was just talking about you earlier. Leaf. Love it. Flemish. Very cool. Jasmine, thank you. That's an interesting spelling, Jazz. Very cool. Got a lot of fans in Toronto. I should probably go up there and do something. You're welcome, Brian. Who is the greatest hypnotist I know besides me? Wow. That's not an ego question waiting to happen, is it? Um, the greatest hypnotist I know besides me. God, there's so many good hypnotists out there. Um, probably, probably Bandler. Uh, and only because, and, and when I talk about uh, the guy is just scary good um, because he can do things and you'll never see it coming. Uh, but a lot, there's a lot of really, really good people out there. I think I'd have to qualify who's the greatest hypnotist I know because I think it's very, very niche. You know, we talk about stage hypnosis or therapeutics or things like that. You know, a lot of good people out there. A lot of good people out there. Be kind is if, if you guys get a chance. Um, Jerry's getting. Jerry was one of my mentors. He's one of the uh, the old men, the old legends. You're welcome, Mark. Appreciate it, Jose. I'll see about coming to Toronto. It seems to be uh, there seems to be a trend forming here. Um, I think. Um, yeah, I'd have to niche it because I don't. I don't think there's many people that can do everything well. I certainly strive for it. That's I'm just competitive that way. Um, but I would never call myself the greatest hypnotist on the planet. Um, I might let you do it, but I wouldn't do it. Yeah, niches. I prefer to call them specialists. Yeah, you're gonna find if you're gonna do this as a career, if you're that special kind of stupid, you need to niche yourself. Nobody goes looking for hypnotherapy uh, on the internet. They go looking for people to take their pain away, to make them lose weight. So the riches are always going to be in the niches. You does, and it doesn't. People think if they pick a niche that they only they can only do those things. It's not true at all. I handle everything, but yet I tell people my specialty is uh, physiological illness that has as its root repressed emotion. And one of the reasons I chose that was a because it's true, but b because if I can do that, I can do pretty much anything else, uh, which is why I chose it. Uh, plus, I have the medical background that allows me to say things that most clinically or classically trained hypnotists can't say. Dude, thank you so much for uh, three eighteen. Where you're at? Holy shit! Somebody give David a big round of applause for like endurance. All right. Well, I think it's about time to say goodbye. So I will leave you. You're welcome, Christopher. I will leave you with something I often do in my meetups. For those of you who are old, this will be familiar. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or a trance or sing a song. Seems we just got started. And before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long. We'll see y'all next great night.